Good evening and welcome to the October 28, 2019 Board of Selectmen's meeting. Please join me in a pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're going to start tonight with two with uh, two public hearings, and the first one we're going to open up at uh, 1900 RSA 41 colon 14 dash A on four Second Street release deed restriction number four four bedroom restriction. Mark, do you want to? Uh, Peter's, uh, Peter, sorry, he's being kind to me. He, uh, he submitted this petition on behalf of his clients for the release of uh, the uh, five-bedroom deed restriction. Uh, what the uh, property owners want to do is they want to replace two cabins that had two bedrooms each for a total of four bedrooms to one larger structure that has five bedrooms. Did I get that right, Peter? Okay. So uh, when, when we're considering, and the board, of course, has only been in the business of potentially releasing deed restrictions for about two years now. And the thing to, there are things to consider when we, we find a number of permutations of, of deed restriction problems. Yeah. And um, in looking at this, uh, there are actually three aspects to this particular deed restriction. Uh, not only is there a uh, four bedroom limit under the deed restriction, but there's also only one single family dwelling deed restriction. And also um, uh, no subdivision. Now, actually, uh, I think the no subdivision deed restriction is, is one that could not be enforced because it was not in the prior lease, which is how the, the program was set up. You could only have deed restrictions in the deed that were in the prior lease uh, for the uh, renter at that time. Um, so there are things that there are more than needs to be dealt with here than just the four bedroom restriction. Uh, and I've informed attorney sorry of this. Um, there is the only one single family dwelling restriction. This parcel was part of a larger one at one time and was subdivided back in 1990. And at that time, there were uh, four buildings on it rather than just the one single family. And so when two new parcels were created, it, it, the, the question of the violation of the one single family should have been dealt with at that time, and it wasn't, apparently. So I, uh, the, the banks, especially, and buyers titled, title-wise, have become very um, uh, cognizant of these restrictions now and, and whether they're adhered to and the banks don't want to finance them if there's any trouble. Yeah. So what we're trying to do with this procedure is to clear up any problems rather than just to, to leave, to, to clear up one and not clear up the others. So uh, my recommendation to the board is rather than proceeding beyond this first hearing uh, to the second hearing and then a third where you make a vote on only one of the three issues involved that you uh, ask that this be uh, sent back to the planning board to deal with uh, what I hope attorney will sorry will ask for which is relief from the two other restrictions of the three okay. and he, he's okay. amenable to that okay all right anything else mark that's uh, enough for this one all right anybody from the public wishing to uh, speak on this matter Seeing nobody will go to the board. Mary Louise, do you have anything yeah, to say? Yeah, I'm a little confused because we've got this packet. And this Correct. this final page, it shows two buildings. I'm just trying to get my head around where these things are. It looks like two buildings on that parcel. 
But then when I go look over here, this parcel doesn't look that big, but I'm not, you get me confused in other words. I like the concept of a single home. Yep, the, the one lot that existed back at the time these uh, were platted, it's actually uh, perhaps. Is that the bottom one? Uh, no, are you on the, on the right one? <coughs> God um, bless you. you. I'm, yeah. You're, you're here, these two. Yeah, yeah, but then over here it looks much more narrow, uh, so yeah. I can't figure which one is which. That's because that's divided in half by the subdivision. This lot? Yes. Not these two together? Correct. My goodness, anything and one so can do to confuse us. It yes. shows the uh, building, uh, I believe it shows the buildings at that time as well on the oh, second okay. page. Uh, see. Yeah, here, and that, the, all that stuff crammed on there. Okay. Right. And there will be uh, on-site parking? So we don't have anything intruding onto Second Street. That's terrible yes. parking down there. That that uh, it's it is going to have what the in terms of parking, it's going to have a two car garage. Right. But but uh, are we going that far right now, or are we just making a recommendation for it to go back to the planning board? I'm just trying to understand is that what right? we're doing. Right. Hey Regina, okay. do you have anything? Okay. No, I agree that we should probably just have it go back to the planning board, right? Ditto. Ditto. So. We just have to make a recommendation. Do we need to take a vote? I, I think uh, because we would be basically terminating this current process. Okay. I'll make a motion that we. I'll All second right. it. All right. All in favor? Good. Unanimous. All right. So we'll close this public hearing at 1907 and recommendations to go back to the uh, planning board. And Attorney Sari has indicated he'll be. Uh, uh, putting something in writing, seeking relief from the other okay. two aspects. Right. So after Attorney Sari does that, then we will have another hearing posted on here? Once it comes back to you from the planning It board. will be predicated on that, and then you'll let us know and bring you on the next agenda. Well, if, if possible. Yeah. Well, do the best we can. Okay. Okay, at 1907, we're going to open up the second public hearing, RSA 41 colon 14 A. First hearing, 1907 Ocean Boulevard, oh. release deed restriction number four, four bedroom and seven foot setback restrictions. Wow. Mark, do you want to speak on this one? Yeah, this, this uh, again, like the other, has more than meets mm -hmm. the eye. Yeah. Um, it's assumed in the application that this is a legal two-family, and I'm not sure that's true. Um, uh, in the, this is in the RA zone, and uh, no two-family, as of 1991 anyway, a two-family was not allowed in that zone. Um, was it there before 1991? It was, but, 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 um, <laughs> when uh, there was a 1976 lease, this was the lease that preceded the deed, and the 1976 lease indicated that um, only one single family was allowed. Um, in 1950, uh, I've gone through the tax cards such as we have them, uh, and this did not show up as a two-family until 1979, which is three years after the lease. So I'm not sure the lease was violated. In order to have the status of a non-conforming use for zoning purposes, it has to be a legal non-conforming. Yeah. So I'm not sure it was legal at the time. It, there's a bit of history to have to, to look into. I know the piece of property. It's been a family for a long time. I, I'm sure it has. Uh, the question was, uh, was it, uh, was it a, an established two-family before the 1976 lease? That's the question. So. And and I, I can't answer the question for you tonight, but I'm, I'm saying this, there's an interplay between the zoning ordinance restrictions and the deed restrictions. And it's, 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 Hold on. Thanks. It's not clear that there that there was a legal non-conforming at the time. Okay. Is that all from you, Mark? Yeah. Anybody from the public wishing to speak on this? Seeing nobody, we'll go to the board. 
Just really quickly, Mark, will this constitute a public hearing tonight, even though we don't have any, even though we're lacking some information? Will this yes, qualify? Yes, there's a second public hearing. Okay. Um, I did want to say, that, again, this is another one of those that has the subdivision restriction in the deed yeah. that was not in the lease. Right. So technically it's not enforceable, but we, as I've found a few times, the banks come along and they see that, and there's no suggestion here that someone wants to subdivide, but we've seen a lot of occasions where people try to convert two families into condominiums, which is a form of subdivision. I don't know if that's the intent here or not. Okay. If the applicant were here, I'd ask them. Virginia? I have nothing right now. Rusty? No, I think there's still more investigating needs to go into this. So when we close this public hearing, you'll come back to the second public hearing with more information for us? That's the hope. Okay. If nobody else has any more questions, anything? Fred? No. All right. So we'll close the public hearing at uh, 1911. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. We'll now open the uh, public meeting and public comment. Anybody from the public wishing to make comment? Yes, sir. <laughs> Do you want to identify yourself and your address? Gary Pohl, 4 Lion Street. Um, I'm up here speaking tonight about the uh, um, construction you got going down right across here from the Ashworth on, on uh, not on, not on Ocean Boulevard and, and uh, Highland Nave. Um, when you come up to the stop sign, to the stop line on Highland Nave, you cannot see north on Ocean Boulevard. Mm. I've, I brought this up to uh, Mr. Sullivan, and he said that the board, the planning board, has approved this. Now uh, it's going to be a dangerous situation if this thing, if you're going to have to roll into the uh, crosswalk to look up uh, north on there. You can see now with the girders and stuff in place somewhat. But once they fill that all in, you ain't going to see nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the uh, public wishing to make comments? Seeing none, we'll go to announcements and community calendar. Mary Louise? I have nothing this evening. Regina? Um, no, in regards to uh, the public comment we just had, is that, I'm assuming that has to do with the Kenfield construction? So is that going to, do you think that's going to be an ongoing issue? The, and that, the, there's nothing we can do about it? Because well, it's been, I mean, we could, we could investigate it and see what's going on. We could ask the town manager to investigate Yeah, I'd like to ask it. the town manager to do that because that's already a pretty dangerous intersection. Hmm. Okay. Halloween's this week, Thursday night. I guess the weather's not going to be the greatest, so be extra vigilant <laughs> when the kids are out there. Please. So. Yeah, please drive safely on Thursday night. Absolutely. Okay, approval of minutes. Minutes of what? Yeah, that's, I don't see the, from our last meeting, I assume there's no. There are none yet. Oh, there are none. <laughs> there are none yet. That's why there's nothing listed. No approval of minutes. We, did, we worked on the budget. Yeah, but meeting. she has minutes. They haven't had a chance to get them all done. They haven't got them all done. Oh, okay. Consent right. agenda. Parade and public gathering license, Veterans Day ceremonies, 11, 11, 19. Fill the pantry, 5K, 12, 14, 19. Cycle the seacoast, 5, 3, 20. Lease of deed re deferral and notice RSA 72, semicolon 38-A for map 223, lot 030. Also move the consent agenda, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'll second. Any, all in favor? Unanimous. Appointments. Oh, Christy oh. Pulliam, <laughs> Finance Director. Good evening. Good evening. She's been working hard. All right, so October ends this week, but we're going to do our September financials. So um, you guys got those a couple of weeks back. I'll just run through them quickly for us. I also... I have presented them at the budget committee too, so this might be a repeat for some, but <clears throat> we'll just go through it. Um, ninth report, 75% is the target. When you review the revenue report from 2018 to 19, the 2019 revenue is $488,600 higher than where it was in 2018. 
The month's total income is $528,513. Of that total, $319,621 is motor vehicles. Interest on taxes at $6,884. Building permits at $19,585. Departmental income at $77,285 and parking lots at 39,239. District court fines at 3,338 and the real estate trust at $55,080. On the expense side, you will see that we are 70.15% spent or under budget by 1.2 million or 4.85%. In September of 2018, we were under budget by $67,560. If you look back over the past couple of years, going back to 2015, you will find that this amount ranges anywhere between 67000 and 713000 So it really fluctuates um, at this time of year because we just ended the summer season and now kind of have a feel, management has a feel for where we are money-wise and um, get some projects done. And I think you guys have seen that with all the things that DPW has brought before you the last couple of meetings and got approval for. So even though we're under budget, I'm sure that number will change drastically over the next couple of months. When I reviewed the financials in detail, I made a few observations. One was that many of the electric line items are running significantly under the target. There is an estimated $84,991 still outstanding in September bills, just to kind of put in perspective where the $1.2 million is at. Another large bill missing when September financials were completed was 288250 for our liability insurance. We pay that um, once a year. Some of the lines that, are, that were running under target across the budget are repairs and maintenance lines, replacement equipment, vehicle replacement, tree maintenance, new equipment, which makes sense at this time of year for the reasons I just said, you know, we kind of hold off on some of that work to see what the summer months bring for us. Another observation made was related to regular wage lines. These tended to be in areas where positions remain unfilled for a period of time over the course of the year. There are many reasons for this and it varies by department. I also want to point out here that the career incentive and holiday line items will be paid out by the first pay period in December. So all, although they are not spent at this time, they will be spent um, pretty much usually in full by the end of the, by the first week in December. And lastly, the selectmen's meeting, the board, at the last selectmen's meeting, the board, board had approved 172,000 in projects for public works. So I was just kind of give you a breakdown of a lot of that 1.2 million. Uh, let's see, and then general government section was at 71.25%. Police department is at 68.34%. Fire is at 72.54%. Building department is at 67.45%. Public works is at 65.5%. 34%. Parks and Recreation is at 66.59. Library is at 73.2. The Recreation Fund 24 is at $248,522. The Cable Fund is at $281,821. I believe the board approved a payment last week to the school, so that will drop. The Private Detail Fund is at $258,352. EMS fund is, is at 407439 and the wastewater system development charge, we've collected $58,770 through the end of September. And uh, the balance in that account is $240,651. So that's where we are for the financials for the end of September. Questions, uh -huh. Rusty? No, I saw this a couple of weeks ago at the budget committee and thank you for getting, oh, yeah, done, you were there. getting done early. I appreciated yep. that and I know the budget committee did also. Mary Louise? She, she must, you must dream about figures. Sometimes. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. That's it. Uh, Chrissy, awesome job. Uh, I have no questions. I was just looking over the revenue funds this month. Uh, it looks like we have for the recreational fund, I was just noting that revenues are slightly lower than they were a prior year. So is the cable committee quite substantially uh, goes from three hundred fifty-four thousand dollars in revenues down to two hundred fifty-eight thousand this year. But luckily, our expenses also decreased on that. And private details actually have increased uh, for the police actually have increased quite a bit. And 
emergency medical services have substantially decreased the revenues. So I know that you don't have any control over those, but thank you for uh, doing such a good job on the monthly financials. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm, I'll just comment on the franchise fees. I think that we were missing a quarter with a franchise fee, so that number will change. Um, so we'll I think we only had two quarters in there, if I remember correctly, when yeah. I looked at that. Um, and the third quarter had been posted incorrectly, so it will be moving back over here. I think it was like another 83000 so that will still put us a little bit, but probably right in line, a little under what it was at. And so. on the Capitol, I'll leave the Warren articles. Yes. A lot of them, I noticed, I, most of them, obviously, public works projects, because that's what we have the most happening here in Hampton. A lot of them are still available. Do you think that a lot of those are going to be used at the end of the year? I believe so, yes. Okay. All right. Public works, we're going to spend all that money, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. So. All right. Thank you. Uh, I don't have anything else on there, but I can I give an update on the tax rate? Is sure. that appropriate? Sure. You guys all received it, but would you like me to give an update Go. for the public? Do it. Do it. Okay. Yeah. So the tax is rate was set on Friday, <laughs> um, and it, the overall tax rate is sixteen dollars <coughs> and one penny. So it's down from seventeen oh two from last year. The municipal portion, as Regina had pointed out last week, only portion that you this board has any control over was um, five dollars and ninety two cents so it was down from six dollars and twenty seven cents from last year so um, that has been processed I know Fred has uh, the tax warrant for you guys to sign tonight the tax collector worked hard on that I think she might have been here on Saturday if I uh, saw some of her emails correctly that were going back and forth between the software company so if all goes well, um, since we do have the tax rate at the 1601, she had her warrant run, and ha Fred has that for you guys to sign tonight. So hopefully the bills will be going out by November 4th with a due date of December 4th. Um, so that's kind of just the update there. I don't know if anyone has any questions or anything, but I wanted to at least give you the update. Yep. Any questions, Rusty? Mary Louise? Yeah, really quickly. I noticed uh, Fred gave us a, a chunk of uh, potential warrant articles for March. And I noticed in there about the elderly exemptions that that is uh, going to be voted on, increasing elderly exemptions, whatever. That would only take, if, if it's passed in March, it wouldn't be effective until the second. Correct, the December bill, right? Second right. half of 2020. I believe so, yes. No? no? No. No. The year after? It'll be, it'll be effective in April. Oh, for the July bill? For the July bill. For the July bill. Oh, well, that, yeah, I mean, there's like a six month. Uh... No. First half bill will be it'll right. effective on it if, it if you approve it and if it gets passed. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Mr. Okay. Chairman, you, you do need to take a formal motion and vote to approve the. Uh, the tax billing for the second half of okay. 2019. Do you want me to? So, we'll we'll questions first. Yeah, I just, I just want to reiterate about the town portion of the tax rate because I've been doing an analysis on all pieces of the tax rate going back to 2016. And looking at the pieces, so we have the municipal portion, which this board through the town manager controls, we have the state and local education, we have the county portion which that is a total of 16.01 for 2019, a total decrease from 17.02 last year. And then we also have the precinct, which is added on for residents that live down in the precinct. Correct. That's not what, part of the 1601. And I'm not really gonna talk about that tonight, but I just wanted to say, since I've been a selectman in 2016, the municipal portion of the tax rate was 6.41%. It then dropped down to 6.32%. And then in 2018, it dropped down to 6.27%. And now in 2019, it's at 5.92%. So I just wanted to reiterate that when people, you know, talk about t taxes are out of control and, you know, the town is spending all types of money, that they really should look at what the tax rate is made up and what portions of it are controlled by this board because I never really realized it until I became a selectman and now I look at it quite continuously and I think the town manager has done an excellent job in making sure that it's leveled out for the residents of Hampton and I want to point just point that out tonight. What's that percentage that uh, the municipal rate dropped from five, from six what? It was from six twenty seven to five ninety two. Correct? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
my fingers worked. Oh, actually, about six percent. About six percent drop. Is that what you had, Regina? I have about five point five eight. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. I think people sometimes like to see this percentage too. Yep. Any other questions? Yeah, people just got to remember that you know, we only have a, about a third of the entire tax rate is the town, the right. municipal part of it, and school. The school is school, county, yep. state. state is the rest of it, and uh, you know when 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 you say your tax is out of control, you just can't look at. Right. town and say my taxes are out of control because it's not the town ours just keeps continuing to go down and down and down of course we got to remember that our services continue to get harder yeah. and harder and harder yeah. with our with our helping to put the tax rate down so right. okay do we have a motion uh, oh you have something you want to say uh, well i do you want me to read the uh warrant total there for them or we need a motion on what, Fred? For the warrant, correct? Yeah, we need a motion for the warrant. Yeah. Okay. Your Honor. It's $31,277,355. That's what she'll be sending out for the tax bills. Okay. And that's the warrant that Fred has um, in your in his pile for everyone to okay. sign tonight. So have, I'll make that motion for oh. the, what, the figure she oh, said. Oh, sorry. 31 million. million. Two hundred and seventy-seven thousand three hundred and fifty-five dollars. Correct. I'll second. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Before All right. Will you meet a tax collector and a treasurer? Was, very happy. Before Christy <laughs> goes, I have a quick question. Go ahead. Um, Christy, you gave us this memo on the IRS um, trying to uh, impose a seventeen thousand eight hundred dollar fine. Have we any more? Uh, I think that was from Jamie or Fred, not me. But yes, and I think that uh, last I was brought to my attention, we had put in a letter to oppose the fees, and Jamie had reached out to um, Senator Shaheen's office, correct, Fred? Yes. yes. And she was working on that. It has like a 99 point something percent. Okay. Um, so it hasn't been resolved yet, but correct, it's no. in process. It's in process. It Good. Yeah. Thank you. I have you. one question, Go Mr. Ahead. Chairman. Uh, is it possible now the audit's done that we could schedule to have the auditors come in? We can. After the budget or whatever is yep. good for the board? That is fine. All right, thank you. Do we, do we need the auditors to come in? Is there a specific That's reason? That's up or? to the board. Yeah, I would like to talk with them about the financials. We usually bring them in. They're usually in once a year after, yeah. after we've done the budget. Do they come every year, Christy, or is it? They've come the last couple of years. Okay. But prior to that, they hadn't been for several years. So All it right. goes back and forth amongst the boards. All right. So we can schedule that after um, later in November. Okay. Sounds yeah. good to me. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. And the audit is on the website too. Okay. Thank you. So. Thank you. All right. Next, uh, Chris Jacobs, DPW Director, Jen Hale, Deputy Director, Budget <laughs> Review. Wow. Good evening. If it's agreeable to you and agreeable to the board, if we go section by section, after each section we can stop and ask questions since you have such a large budget. Let us know what works for you. That works for you guys? Sounds good to me. Work for the board? Yep. Good. Administration regular wages. Is that where you want to start? Start at the beginning of your budget. Okay. Um, there isn't a whole lot to say on that except that uh, both, uh, and, and for anyone who hasn't, uh, and probably people at home, Susan Thrumston. Susan is our operations coordinator. She took over for Teresa about a year and a half. July. Time flies, you know. <laughs> and uh, and right, and before that was Marie. So right, she took over for Marie. She's a brave woman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, 
we'll leave it at that. <laughs> but uh, no, she keeps us all on track, and uh, a lot of this, especially this, like this first section, uh, and the reason what brought that to mind is that she and Christy uh, worked together to actually put this together. In other words, uh, like this first section, that kind of number is not really my number or Jen's number. Um, but it is a combination of uh, looking at all the employees that we have, the turnover that we've had, uh, the, and getting the correct pay grades and uh, rates, and that's uh, how that has all come, uh, how we come to that. There are no additional employees in this. It's still the same number of uh, yeah. physical bodies as last year or available physicians as last year. Uh, and the same thing with the uh, part-time wages, the uh, 83-199 line, and then the same thing with respect to the uh, overtime wages. We typically used each year the same amount of uh, labor, be it uh, 800 hours of overtime coverage for uh, highway. We look at the office coverage. We also, the, one of the few lines that gets tweaked every year is the voting coverage. Uh, I think you are going to see that is up over past years, only because I know there's four or, I think we're planning on there's actually four elections next year, and we're planning on five. Because mm -hmm. we have the February primary, March town meeting, yep. fall primary uh, for like local elections, and then um, the November vote. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely four. Uh, in so the where election. does that show up on the budget on this? That would be under overtime wages. Okay. Um, oh, it's under overtime. Yeah. yeah, it's just under overtime. Okay. So sometimes when you look at that and you say, you know, Yep. For instance, why is that up here or down? So, uh, let's see. Go on to the next page. The uh, reimbursed maintenance, that line, the 7000 is that's, again, uh, the cost that uh, we put out on vehicle maintenance, primarily for the police uh, recreation departments. Um, we get reimbursed back. That's why that shows up there is that number. <coughs> um, the career incentives line at 3,300 is literally um, something that was negotiated in the contract, I believe, two years ago. So that's, uh, uh, that is a contract line. That is based upon uh, the number of staff we have and their level that they've accomplished within the Rhodes Scholar Program. Uh, Currently, there's five of our staff that take it from this highway group. Right. Thank you. Uh, detail wages. Uh, we're looking at 15000 for that, although, um, Jen, you wanted yeah. to comment on that. I just wanted to make a brief comment on that. Right now, we use this detail wage line for any of the projects we're doing with officers. We don't put that in the bid. It would cost the taxpayers even more for the project. Um, so right now, last year, we ran it at 15000 um, This is something that we throw out there if we want to look at increasing it. In 2018, we spent 20000 in 2019 to date, so not even finished for the year, we're already at 25,000. Um, the PD has worked with us um, many times over that when it isn't one of our lines can fill it, they have their detail line that can fill it. So um, it's never hurt us per se if there wasn't enough in there, but for real spending, we aren't spending uh, 15, we are spending more than that. So I think it's just uh, noteworthy to make that note um, so everybody's aware of it. Uh, telephone covers literally all the departments. I know there's some things that we break out by department, like for instance, electrical or water usage, but this phone line at 30,000 at 780 is for the whole the public works operation, uh, including wastewater and um, solid waste, sewer drain, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, drug and alcohol testing, uh, a necessary line. Uh, again, we carry a contingency of only $140 in that line uh, in case we have to retest or we have a missed test or a new employee or new turnover employee that was too much. A flyer or whatever, you know, just a bad test. So that isn't something we, we kind of mess around with at all. Um, staff Development Highway, we've kind of, we have kept that in check. Um, I know that we have in there uh, 2000 for there again, the road scholar training this past year, I only I had to cut that back to a thousand. Um, it's it's so important that I had a couple of employees actually pay for their own training. They wanted to keep going on the program. They did not want to stop. Um, 
so it has been a valuable um, resource, valuable tool for us, because otherwise we don't really get out and do, we don't promote much other training beyond that. Mm -hmm. uh, electric uh, is just, I think that's just the public works garage. We did notice in going down through, we've spent the last couple of days going down through our electric bills to make sure that we had them all right. And um, we realized that we were paying for the, the two drainage pump stations, Hackett Lane and Tuck Road, out of our uh, administration line. Mm. When, you know, technically we probably should have that under sewer and drainage division, but <laughs> it, either way, we're it's talking $1,600 in the overall budget. Yeah, but. Mm. I bring that up because I think at times um, people may get the impression that we don't actually mine down through our budget and really look for cost savings. But I can literally show you that, that um, both Jen and, and Susan put together an amazing spreadsheet that literally we looked at every single bill. And that's how we came up with that is that uh, um, we, as I say, we ch chase it down. Uh, heating fuel. Um, uh, we've, we're carrying 20632 in our request, but I believe the manager put in 175. I think it's probably worthy to discuss how or I think Fred used an average. And how do we want to address yep. that? I have a question. Can, can we finish this section and then we'll go I to want, the question? Well, I, he's right on that. But why don't we finish and then okay. we'll go to questions. Okay, we'll move down to the end of the section then. Okay. Uh, water, uh, again, um, 12391 We are looking at, um, there will possibly be some, I know there's going to be some cost savings there. We were able to chase down the um, leak that we had, kind of find out it was yeah. all the way back at the wastewater treatment plant mm -hmm. building where the meter is. Um, it only took four or five attempts. Um, we're finding that it saves on the average of about a thousand dollars a month. Um, understanding that this water line, we, it gets split half uh, administrative, half through wastewater treatment plant. So the savings would be across both lines. Right. So this one's just a, a touch high. Uh, rent, I think, as we we've only got one bill, lower bill, since we finally isolated and mm -hmm. made the repair. I think maybe by. Um, once we have a September, October, and a November, yeah. or, uh, October, November. October, November, two more. Months. We could be sitting here in December and say, and or recommend a deliberative session, you know, an even slightly lower number than that. But we are talking the fine, the, it would be cents on the dollar. Uh, leases and rentals stays uh, the same at 76650 The uh, 76000 of that is the anticipated uh, 2019 uh, Mack truck. Um, we talked to the dealer today. It was supposed to be here October 30th. It'll probably be here just before Thanksgiving. Uh, uniform rentals is a contract um, we have with Unif UniFirst, and we cover another, carry another <coughs> 2,000 in there to uh, live up to the terms of the uh, boot policy under um, the uh, collective bargaining agreement. Uh, supplies. Um, at 30,000, we did carry 28 last year. Uh, that was a number that I slightly trimmed uh, in an effort to stick with a um, default budget line. Um, building maintenance, uh, we're leaving in it, we're here in this budget at 14K. Um, we'd asked for 15. Um, our default that we're working with this year is 20. Um, we have things like, uh, if anyone's been down there recently, the, the d main door to go into the h highway garage section, um, that door is worthless. <laughs> and um, <laughs> that's actually scheduled for replacement, or they've asked me, and I told them to go ahead and do it or get it approved and done. But there's a number of things down there. The building's a 19, let's see, our addition's 87, and I believe the main part of the building is 67. Mm -hmm. So we're dealing with... 20, Almost a 60, yeah, 60 year old building. Yeah. Um, it's seeing its effects. Um, rusted columns, uh, corner trim pieces. Each year in the past, we've been replacing some siding, replacing some roofing panels, mm -hmm. attempting to keep the building going, if you will, nursing along. Don't let it yep. fall apart. So, this is a very important line to protect um, 
your investment. Uh, with respect to the gasoline and diesel fuel, again, uh, Susan and Christy work together in that. We pretty much get that right from the finance, so I wouldn't uh, have much to say on that. Uh, vehicle maintenance, 86.6. Um, how that breaks down is uh, major repairs, 7,000, electrical, five tires, 14,000 roughly, shop supplies only 6,000, 50,000 for the regular uh, maintenance. And this, this covers a number of vehicles and oil and grease at 2,500. Um, then the only uh, new equipment is zero, replacement equipment is zero, federal storm water requirements. I know in the past we've carried as high as 40, we're down to 10,000. Uh, that was due to the fact that EPA realized that the, if they took the full weight of their regulations that they had proposed and put them on the communities, they would not have been able to get them done <laughs> physically. There wasn't enough manpower in New England. So they've been stretched out over a number of years, like a five year. We are on top of it. Uh, matter of fact, we're, we're ahead of the game. Uh, and this 10,000 keeps us ahead of the game. So the total for, do you want to go? No, the only thing I wanted to say is that you've heard us talk about the Seacoast Coalition before. Um, it's with their help as well that the towns have come together uh, to try to make the reporting more standardized uh, and using the same basis from town to town. So the total for admin is uh, 1,677,634. Thank you. Yep. Mary Louise, you have questions? Well, we're not at the end yet. You said to wait till the end. We're, we we're going section, section by section. We're at the end of the section, aren't we? Yep. Uh, it, it, yeah. It would be a good break. By section, it would so be a good break in this point. section. Right. So we're still in administration. Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, on page 55, the uh, heating fuel, mm -hmm. uh, is that natural gas? Or For the highway garage and office, yes. It's just, okay, because it said heating fuel, but I didn't know what kind of. Yeah, it's. it's so okay. that's, that's good. Now, on your rentals and leases, uh, lease for 2019, max, six wheel truck, et cetera. Now, this is a permanent vehicle, not a summer type vehicle. And Correct. you said you're expecting it, what, any day now? Yeah. And what's it replacing? Which specific one? It's uh, one of the six wheelers. It's one of the six wheeler dumps. So okay. it's replacing one of the old um, right. trucks that were, we went through last year. But we'll year. get rid of it or sell it for scrap or something it's so part we don't of have the trade. It's part of the trade. Part of the trade. Part of the trade. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Thank you very much. Yeah, we won't keep it around. I hate seeing a whole pile of stuff sitting in the yard. Um, paving and reconstruction. You know, there, I come up from little. There little are two more sections road. down. We, we haven't gone to pave. We, they're not oh, there I'm yet. sorry. So That's we're okay. all through, and if we're all through sure. with administration, you'll be there in two minutes. Okay. Regina. Yes. Um, so staff development. So. We, the $2,500, you think, is that enough for, I mean, I don't think that your staff should have to pay to, this will help offset those costs. Yeah, the, the 2000 it is enough because, um, you know, it isn't like I'm sending, we're doing more of the, uh, tra exactly, training inside, okay. and we're using resources like Primex, for instance. Okay. About this time a year ago, I went through the whole department and said, okay, everybody needs to have these core trainings. For instance, chainsaw safety, um, back ergonomics, CPR. CPR. CPR has been accomplished. Fire extinguisher training has been accomplished. Yeah. So we're still working on those minimum things. And so I've been able to justify with the rest of the staff that there are some people that are really lacking and other people who have zoomed ahead. And the Zoomers have had to slow down and wait for the others because they're a team, and the whole team needs to have a certain basic level of training. And that's why I think this money is adequate. Good. Okay, another question I have is the federal storm water requirements. I realize you guys are definitely ahead of the game on that. I know a few years ago you were sort of fighting with the budget committee and whether or not. Oh, because we didn't know. Right, but this is the MS4. Is that what this is related to? Yep. Yes. And exactly. I'm assuming that following all these regulations takes 
quite some. It's a lot of record keeping in our people GIS system uh, that we use uh, through all the departments. So Toby with sewer and drain tracking every single catch basin that's clean and every line um, that's been replaced or cleaned or improved as well as yeah. um, the markings of the catch basins and painting and there's an educational component. So Jim has been out um, giving presentations uh, on basically our asset management system and how it's helping and how it's used for uh, forecasting projected costs. So um, it's those type of things uh, that they do at the Seacoast Coalition where they all sat down and were able to do it together mm -hmm. and that report comes produced out of it and was submitted ahead of schedule indicating mm -hmm. to EPA we're on top of things. That's awesome to hear. And then also, while we're on this section, I know we're probably not going to talk about it tonight, but I like to ask the board that we consider um, perhaps adjusting the regular wage line item for uh, the deputy and the, mm -hmm. the director and the deputy director of Public Works Department at some uh, time in the future before we approve the budget. You want, is that a motion? Or? Well, I'm, I make a motion. I mean, I have a I have a number in mind that we adjust the line item by seven thousand four hundred fourteen dollars, giving each of them a four percent raise. But yeah, okay. Would you second that motion right now? Yeah. All right, I'll make that motion. Okay, we got a motion and we got a second. It's open for discussion. Can I make a comment? Excuse me. Can I make a comment? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to raise. Oh. Jennifer's salary is substantially below market, given what she does. Uh, Fred will back me on this. I sat between he and Jamie and said this, and I'll repeat it. I don't, I don't need a raise. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> um, but I think that if that's the amount of money, I think it all should go into her budget line. It would bring her into the 90s range of salary, which is uh, getting to where she needs to be. But I, I personally, I respect and thank you for the, the backing and the effort, but I, I think to put some parity into uh, our respective salary lines, I think all that should be dedicated to her salary line. I, I appreciate, I really appreciate that statement and yeah. I will uh, make a new motion, I'll withdraw that one, I make a new motion that we adjust the salary line item by $7,414, giving the Deputy Director Hale an 8% raise. And I'll I'll well, second. I'm not sure if it's 8%, but $7,414 yeah, raise. I'll second that. How does that fit with the study that we did? The pay plan. Yeah. Jamie and I will have a recommendation with regards to this salary and two others that are not in conformance with the pay plan. Okay, we think should be adjusted so that they are, and that'll be coming forward for you when you approve this budget. Right. Do you have anything else, Rusty? My only thing is I'm not <coughs> against it. I would just like to see us. What we originally we talked about doing all the stuff when mm -hmm. after we looked at the whole budget. That's correct. And, and you're going to bring some right. forward some stuff. So we are. And I would, I would rather wait and see Fred and Jamie's suggestion okay. and, and study on it. There are certain positions that are compatible within the management structure of the town, and her position is under all of those. Mm -hmm. So they need to be, hers needs to be adjusted to come up to those. Uh, I'd like to see that first. Yeah. So. So it's we're not that I'm against this, it's just that I. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you want to see the paperwork. I want to see the paperwork. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So we're going to flag this. Sorry, it's, it's up to Regina. Yep. Thank you. It's up to Regina. She well, made the motion. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I, I'll, I'll wait for the paperwork, but I see what they do, and okay. I see their job getting harder and harder every day. So oh, yeah. I'd like to do it as soon as possible. What's that? What it was $7,414, but that was taking 4% from each of their salaries okay. and adding it that's together. That's why I wanted the amount, so $7,414? Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And I think the minutes should be sent to the director's wife. <laughs> <laughs> I told her how to live stream, so. <laughs> Jen, pull that light and your microphone a little closer to you because. Thanks. Rusty, do you have questions? Do we have waste here. oil heaters at the uh, in we your do. garage? We do. How, how, uh, how successful are we getting to people to bring? Do we get enough oil out of that? Well, we get the oil that we generate on our own within right. the fleet. We have two. 330 gallon tanks beside there and there's another I think it's 500 so 
Those end up getting filled probably by August every year. Oh. And then we use, I've asked the staff, and, and they've been very conscious about it. If we're going to heat, just take the chill off, we, we try and use those burners first. Mm. And so the, the gas is uh, um, basically shut right down. Um, and I've even gone as far as last year in April when it got warm enough, yet I knew the heaters were still on, went out and threw the circuit breakers so they wouldn't even come on at all, huh. irregardless of how you spun the dial. Um, so they've been very, very good about keeping that line in check uh, so that it doesn't go up year after year. Do we get much waste oil from the public? We get some. some. And if you recall, a few weeks ago we were here uh, asking for the authorization to apply for the grant um, through DES uh, that is allowing us to buy an oil filter crusher uh, in the stand that goes with it so we'll have a better capability. The oils that we do, we're changing right then and there. Uh, people will be able to bring it, and the whole purpose of that grant is to encourage do-it-yourselfers at home mm -hmm. to bring it to us. I just think that, you know, there's a lot of that out there, and if we can capture that, that oil. That oil is reprocessed. One of the things that we're cautious about with that oil, because we don't monitor it as closely as our own, is that if uh, you filter it hydraulic fluid or something else got in there to and contaminated the, the oil that we have in our garage, then the oil burner wouldn't work. So we're, we're very leery about uh, what we I know those put in those tanks. Burn pretty much anything. <laughs> yeah, they do, but they'll get fouled and then have a heavy repair cost quickly right. if uh, you don't put the right stuff through them. Mm. Like once you wash your fluids. Yeah, well, those fluids don't. <laughs> okay. That's it, thanks. Going on? No. no. Oh. I have two questions. Number one, you've answered a couple, but um, one was the rental and leases. When I saw that 100%, I was a wow, what was that? But you've already answered that question. Regina answered the question on the staff development. I mean, staff, staff development's so important mm -hmm. because of the fact it saves money in the long run. It does. You know, so that's, and you've done that. The other thing, the other one I had was, Jen, you mentioned the detailed wages, that there's not enough money there. Mm hmm I truly believe it should be higher. We're looking at some larger projects uh, um, as far as warrants coming across your desk lock road. Uh, that's going to be a longer project than Park Ave would be, so thus meaning increasing the details costs. Um, there's some other sewer projects, the Lane Street we talked about using the additional funding. That's also going to need uh, police details. Um, so I, I do. I recommend that we increase that line um, only based on what I've learned since we originally put this together. Um, you don't realize how much it adds up, especially when you start closing a road and needing two officers at a time. Fred, do you have any? Well, obviously, we use some of the detailed wages from the police department. Right, to so help. you do have that option. Uh, we also have the option when we do major projects of including costs within the project, which then relates strictly to that particular project. Right. The only thing there, just as an example, Park Avenue, I wound up here because our warrant article didn't have enough funding in it. So then we're paying it out of different budget lines anyway. It, it's a, it's truly a risk where we don't have the crystal ball. I'm sorry. Uh, but I concur with Fred, and, and that's why I felt it was necessary to mention it. Um, but they, there is the ability. Uh, PD has always worked with us on that. Okay. Christy, do you have any comments? You're looking like you do. No, no? I have no comments. All right, so want to move on to the next section? Oh, wait a minute. Engineering. Uh, engineering line is uh, 28,000. Um, we use this for the, for instance, like on the Park Ave project, uh, wetland permitting, some other things, uh, if a structural analysis issue comes up, like within one of the buildings, things of that nature. Um, we've used it in the past to uh, uh, basically uh, give us a, something that we can dip into for outside engineering services that we use. Things come up during the year. Most of them have to do with, with respect to wetlands. Um, and then the other uh, 8,000 of that 28,000 is the uh, one half of the asset management program that we instituted a few years ago. Um, I have fluctuated on this line in the past, but only to help balance the budget. So we're asking at this time to uh, keep it at the 28,000 total. Yes. And we're talking uh, engineering services, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Uh, oh, all right, and that's paving and reconstruction. That's I'm just trying to figure, I'm in the pages and you guys are running, I'm in the actual description pages here. Page 56. Yes. By itself. Yes. Okay. Zero. That drives me crazy. I come over here. We're not at paving yet. We're not at paving yet. We're not at paving yet. We're just finishing engineering. And I'll give you a, a good example of how we use that engineering line. Uh, we're using Craig Musselman from CMA Associates to help us put together the four bid documents for solid waste services that are going out here maybe by the end of the week, first of next week. Uh, that's where that kind of money would have come from uh, is uh, something that was anticipated, but he has been an amazing resource, and he was an amazing resource for the Solid Waste Committee too. And that's where I pay for those services out of that those type, that line. Okay. okay, Regina, do you have anything on engineering? I'm good, thank you. Rusty, all set. I'm all set on engineering. Now we're into paving. Hooray! Zero. <laughs> Discussion. All right, Mary Louise. <laughs> I come over here to our meeting. I go from Little River Road onto High Street, and until I get to Hobbs, the pavement is disgusting. I'm, I'm waiting for my car to fall apart. We have got to be more proactive, and I know it's, it's a hard choice for you, because all this stuff is really expensive. But in the 56 years that I have lived here, these roads are driving me crazy. And I'm hoping that we find a way to do some substantive work. I did check with Chris before we sat down for our public meeting. I'm wondering, with this paving and reconstruction, I'm wondering if we couldn't communicate with Aquarian, perhaps. Uh, they are in, in the process of repairing their water lines on Mill Road at the moment. And they have a pretty degraded um, system uh, as, a, uh, as a water company. And I'd like to see if we can talk with them or if they would be willing to talk with Chris about a, a plan that Aquarian might have to get rid of some of its degraded lines. Uh, that's uh, caused no end of trouble on Mill Road. And there are other areas in town, I think, where the Aquarian system is, is degraded and making messes. Uh, Chris and the Public Works Department have enough mm -hmm. to worry about with paving without having another entity uh, perhaps not as proactive as they should be on the water line replacement. There, I said it. Regina? Yeah, actually, I was going to, I feel you as far as driving around this town, you know. 90% of the driving I do is in Hampton, and when I got to take my car and have it get realigned, it's okay. from driving on these roads, and this is no reflection on the Public Works Department. Right. This is, I mean, we have a five-year average expense of $59,000, and I mean, if anyone's driven down Wanaconnet Road lately. Yes. And we all know, and I was gonna bring up Wanaconnet Road later, which I still am because I am literally getting everyone from the wall down to Galley Hatch wants one account it road done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I know that the plan, you know, we have, we pushed the 1A and we got that through. So, you know, that's going to get, that's tier two on the uh, governor's advisory council, gas it, whatever it all stands for. But um, I know, and I know as far as your projects go, you are overwhelmed now and you're going to be overwhelmed next year. But one account it road, I mean, I'm telling people that they want to petition it. And I know that the public can't necessarily petition something that's going to cost, what, probably two, three million dollars? It's going to be a couple of dollars. Jen and I discussed <laughs> this a lot. And the reason why this is in is a paving and reconstruction line is because we've, we've kind of, I want to say, changed the, yeah, we have changed the way we pay for this. For instance, when I came to Hampton, if we got the, the road improvement money, the, the gas sharing tax, mm -hmm. we were lucky. But, and this line had more money in it. 
since then, you, uh, you've done two things. One, uh, we're, we're matching it almost dollar for dollar. We have about a $600,000 yeah. item in there for paving which is substantially higher than we were carrying in the past. Yeah. So we're directly using the gas tax for paving, plus we're matching it. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing is um, the town has got the capital reserve fund where we put away $300,000 a year. I think that's... To drop in the bucket. Well, <laughs> it is, but I understand. I mean, I, I leave it up to the voters if they want to increase that drop into the bucket. Yeah. Uh, but having those two mechanisms along with sewer uh, a sewer replacement line and a, you know a, a drainage replacement line because we've reached the point where i just can't take money paving money and, and honestly sit back and just pave roads we've got to work below them yes. so for yes. instance on a winter cut it three quarters of it is a clay line um i mean we've taken it on the paving uh on the road reconstruction schedule and broke it up into million dollar chunks um, it's it's a five year or better project if you start from one end to the other. So that's rather than this particular focus on this particular line, if we ha if we continue to fund those other mechanisms, sewer replacement, drainage replacement, and um, the road paving, and that that big million dollar, uh, you know, it's I know it's up to it's been three years now. It's back up to a million dollars. Um, you have those mechanisms, then you can get some real work done. And um, so I, I, that's why I still put in zero for this. Didn't we have a uh, Warren article a couple of years ago to do from Lafayette Road down to Mill Road? Correct. And do it, yeah. and that got turned down. Got from when it kind of, you mean when it kind of When it uh, from Lafayette, Lafayette Road to Mill Road. Right, and that was part right. of a grant that we went after, the state right. Uh, grant. Right. And the grant itself was going to pay for uh, X percent of the paving and all the utilities would be on us, and that costs skyrockets. If anybody tries to put it in perspective, now the years are completely off. But when I started here, we did Exeter Road under that Warren article yeah. that was strictly paving. Asphalt. Mill it out, repave it. It was in the upwards of almost 450000 That was about touching a utility right. underneath it. Right. When you start talking about let's just pave roads, and you look at when it kind of, and you go, I got three quarters of it that needs sewer underneath it. Put in perspective, Ann's Lane had sewer redone and repaved. That small section of road in comparison to Exeter Road was almost $400,000 yeah. to do just a portion because it needed utility work. It's the utility work that's right. paved, it, that is expensive. It's not the money that we need in paving. And I think that just goes to what Chris is saying that we've got to fund those other lines to get the utilities done. Mary Louise brought up Aquarian. Yes. The fact that they're doing their water on mill is fabulous against what everybody may think. And here's the reason why the sewer is PVC, the drainage is in good shape. The water is done, and guess what they're doing when they're done? They're paving it. But it's taken years. Years. I, I, I don't want to get in the argument of uh, Aquarian's schedule, but it's taking one road at a time right. and going, how do we get it done? We sat before you, or, or Fred did, because we weren't able to be here the other night, a lane street. Let's get that done. You know, it's, it, mm -hmm. it's money that we have. Let's get the sewer done. Let's get it repaved. It's on both of our lists. Um, this year, we have some beach plum way. We have a portion of timber swamp, you know, getting done where the utilities are already set and those roads are also in horrible condition. We just don't have the funding in any of the lines to just fix them. Um, so for us, it's very, it, it's, it's probably one of the hardest decisions we have to make. Yeah. Go ahead. So, when I look at the problem I have is, you know, we have our projects seem to somehow get pushed off. Like we had that grant that we were going to go mm -hmm. after. Where was that? The safe food mm -hmm. school. It, 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 it yeah. uh, used that as the basis. Yes. So, and we can't do that again. I just don't like it. Like you know, we look at the state and their priorities. You know, we help them out to get the one A done, and they have that as a tier two. But then you look at actual Hampton and their roads, and they have I want to cut it as a tier five. 
So, mm -hmm. I mean, I just hope that the plan is not to wait around for them to push our project up. I think we really need to figure out how to get it done locally because... And they're carrying, they, the state and the 10-year plan, is carrying more money for when it kind of higher up, but only for sidewalks. And the road adjacent surfacing. Improvement. It has so no we, utility money. In they're it. never, they're never going to give us the money, carte blanche, to do the utilities and below it. Hmm. They will assist us with the sidewalks and make that and, 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 you and know, the roadway and, and the traffic calming and yeah. But we'll never. So what is the bet, best bet to get a road like one a ton of done? Like what is your best? Probably a Warren article where where it's directed at you know take a section at a time. Right, that we come up, we, we, sell, we give you a five-year plan. We could give it to you in two years, but it's going to make that a, one A project a for Winnicott was Lafayette to Mill. The, when the state put in a 10-year plan, it was mm -hmm. Winnicott Lafayette down to the boulevard. There is the section between Lafayette and Mill that included school improvements, Safe Fruit School, included parking along the street, greenery, refixing the parking uh, in front of the library, police uh, fire department, uh, the old trolley line, I mean that whole right side, yeah. removing pavement that doesn't necessarily be there, that isn't for parking, you know, revamping the area in its entirety. Oh wait, and doing the sewer and the drainage, it was 1.4 million, I think, was yeah. what it came up to. So if you want to take a <clears throat> chunk, I mean that was 1.4 million two and a half years ago. I think that's the last yeah. time, yeah. That, you know, we looked at I it. think that it will get passed. And that's the thing, if that's the way we the want to look at it, and then you'll have the same people say, you know what, that's how we feel about lock, and that's how we feel about... The danger of putting paving money in this line is if we get voted a default budget. If a push comes to shove as the director, I would have to react first to solid waste, wastewater, those are the two necessities, if mm -hmm. you will. Snow, something like this is always going to get and the default situation trimmed out, and that's why it remains zero. That's, I'm supportive of the special warrant articles yeah. mm -hmm. that specifically say do sewer, do drainage, do this street. So I'd be supportive of a warrant article like that too for one kind of road. The reason this is zero is because the budget committee cut it to zero. Well, that's what I think. And to put it back in right. means that you're going to have to default the budget because. You're going to put a million dollars in here right. in order to get the work done, and that will default the town budget. Right. So we have it in warrant articles, so the town can can pick or choose which mm -hmm. streets they want yeah. to do and how much they want to spend on those streets. Yeah. I, I think it's important to leave it up to the town manager, the director, the assistant director to come up with a plan for this. And I think band aids don't work. Uh, I think you got to do if you do it, you got to do the whole thing. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, I, I am intimately knowledge of every pothole <laughs> <laughs> from here to Nubble and did in avoiding them and having cars almost hit me because I'm avoiding them. So yeah. all the roads are in terrible shape. Yeah. Okay, next section. No, oh, oh. Oh, what do you got? I have one more. Uh, and I know Jim got a copy of this. It looks like there is a possible defect in the 236 Winnicott Road development. Um, I sat on the planning board when wait that minute, was wait, being planned. No, 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 wait, no, no, wait a minute. Hold on one second, please. Yeah. We're talking paving right now. We're not talking. That's talk what I'm talking right but, here. And if you let me finish, wait, you might just understand wait one, what wait I'm saying. Wait one second. Saying. What does it have to do with the paving what, budget? What it has to do with is being aware of a problem with the drainage in that area that was flagged when that development was being worked on in the planning board. Neighbors complained. And it's I'm been going to interrupt Mary been, Louise. No, because wait, been, no, one second, Mary Louise. The planning board dealt with the drainage, it was discussed, the yep, yep, DPW yep. discussed the drainage, and I think that's a whole different issue, so I want to move no, on to the next I'm section. No, I'm trying to say they know that about if the drainage. you have this flagged and problems come up, uh, I think it might pay 
for you now you probably can't go back to the planning board or anybody else because I think that was a bad thing that happened but at least you would be aware in the future if you start getting complaints and if the road is being damaged and all that we certainly don't need any more of that business so I just want to uh, I know you're okay, aware you have, of it. And if, and if you could be aware of the sections we're on and we could move on please to the next section uh, cleaning and maintenance um, or, and under that is repairs and maintenance. We do have some resurfacing money in that. We carry uh, 300 tons of basically patch yeah. uh, material that we use when we're milling. Um, we carry uh, 100 tons of, of what we call patch, but it's the uh, pothole mix, uh, 135 a ton. We also carry in there uh, screened and bank run gravel that we use for road repair. Um, we've got road painting in there. Uh, 25 and I believe that's probably light. Um, we have some hired equipment in there, for instance, uh, only $500 worth, but uh, oh, that's fine. But uh, and um, lawn care, uh, I'm carrying 34,000 in here for lawn care. It is something that it's in our budget, but it's something that I work with Rec on. Uh, Renee and I have been sharing emails. He's going to put it back out to bid because the, the, now that the season's over, the contract's ended. Uh, I don't have a, a current bid amount for that particular line, but uh, he'll do it uh, and, and pass it on to me. Tree maintenance, uh, we're showing just 3,000. I, I believe Selectman Bridal asked me before, how many trees do I really need to do? I have a list probably at this point with 20 trees. There, that we've identified around town. I know there's um, four or five on Ann's Lane that have already been identified. There's um, four or five on Mill Road. Um, there's some on Exeter Road. There's some on um, Toll Farm Road. Uh, we've been working with Unitil this fall to identify a number of trees. Uh, they're gonna take a number of them, but I'm still left with, I know already, about $5,000 worth of trees. There's only 3,000 in that line. Um, and same thing, uh, street signs, we've slowed down dramatically on that. We're only carrying 3,000 for that. So a total for cleaning and maintenance uh, in that line is 142,156. I'm going by that. Questions, Russ, do you want to start? Sure. We control, is that for the sidewalks and the sides of the road with a it's a, to spray? It's currently zeroed. Yeah. And do we need something there? We did in the past. A matter of, uh, I would say yes, because uh, we didn't do it this past summer. Um, I know a lot of time they kept uh, the area in and around Lafayette Road, High Street, Exeter. You know, the downtown was, was where they would do a lot of the curb lines. And um, I think we, could, we missed it for one year, and we probably didn't see a big negative for it, but I think if we continue to skip that line, eventually you will see a big negative. In other words, it'll look not too good. And parking lot repairs, I know that's not the, the beach parking lots, but is that the ones like the High Street High lot? Street, Veterans, well, Korean War, yeah. Um, and you, you don't have anything for repairs in there? We use the line items for the 300 tons and the 100 tons patch. and. How about for the relining them? Or is that so that the relining is in there under um, line painting, okay. um, cross right. walks and cross crosswalks and traffic markings. Right. Um, we've had a lot of concerns uh, in this area that have been brought to us, asking if we could change, you know, the style of our crosswalks, make them all the same type, uh, use what they call. Um, uh, basically the straight block line uh, that's what DOT uses now that's what they'll be putting down on Route 1 um, and our contract is up in 2020 so next year we'll need to put this back out to bid the dollar figures that you have there are for our what we call basic package it's everything we have sort of just painted over um, in conversations with people have come out to, to talk about the Lafayette Road project and other things uh, they've asked if we could maybe you know, just do them all the same. <laughs> so we reached out, and the only way to do that is you, you pay to black them out, and then you make them all the same. 
So your upfront costs that first year are going to be higher uh, to do that. Uh, but then after that, it all wears off, and then you have all the same uh, crosswalks, those type of things. It would increase that line, um, I think, close to, what did we come up with? Um, sorry, moved pages around yeah, here. You're right here. You came up to that one? Yeah, it basically comes back up to one. No, let's. Yeah, you, you put in the 63 that you need. Yeah, it brings it from about 140 something to about 161, okay. 490. And, you know, I, I, I feel like I need to do my job because it's what we hear. And, you know, we're also sharing what uh, people tell us and importance. So um, I think it's only fair that the board hears it. Um, but we all make the decisions on, you know, where everybody feels the money should go. Mm. Uh, and that one came up after as... Chris said, as we're going through item by item by item, that was one that came up because um, we realized we need to rebid it. So you think is that that's on the road painting yes. the lines? That should be another. The actual value we'd like to, Jen would like to see is sixty three thousand four fourteen. Where are you? Um, we're under. Uh, it's under repairs and maintenance. It's okay. Road painting and lines the, and crosswalks. Yeah, painting I got it now. Parking lots. I know you, you we know, did I mean, not stripe them this year. Didn't stripe them this year. Right. They didn't. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking like the high street lot, stuff like that. You know, we start to get some overgrowth of the trees over there. I know they've done some trimming up there this time, but if you got nothing in that line, how can you? So the other, the um, highway block grant warrant article also allows us to address parking lots and striping. So when we quote unquote run out of funding, uh, we use that. Uh, so High Street is anticipated to be completely restriped next year. Uh, when we do the drainage improvements to the parking lot itself, that would be out of a highway block grant funding. And we're gonna repave that lot too well. It is not repaved, it's not in um, a condition sense. We are thinking of seal coating it. Uh, so again, would, th would that that come under this parking lot repairs, the seal coating, would that be? It would come out of this line and it would also come out of the highway block grant. Okay, but when there's zero on this, it means it all comes out of the highway block grant. Yes. Mm -hmm. Except for there's resurfacing and, you know, those type of right. things. Right. All right, thank you. Regina? Um, no, so, like, the tree maintenance, we're going from $25,000 down to 3000 and you said you had about 5000 mm -hmm. to do in repairs. So you're taking some roads down on Mill Street, Mill Road, I hear. So yep. hopefully the one that fell on my car <laughs> is included in that. Um, yeah. No, I don't have any questions. Thanks. Karen Louise. Ah, um, Fred, it seems to me that I recall a big discussion on that parking lot when we were talking about Route 1 and the Route 1 project last year. Mm -hmm. And there was a big discussion on that. Do we have any... Um, feedback on that I, uh, what I'm thinking of I, I remember a big long discussion but I'm also thinking of Academy Avenue and you were going to refer to the arborist up at UNH do we have any uh, do we have any feedback from Durham and is that something that would be a special money article removing the current trees and replacing them with with more uh, user-friendly trees well public works did have all those trees bored and tested the ones county. that are there are healthy well uh, they're not healthy so the question to, the question is do you want to take them down well they're cracking all the sidewalks and stuff and people are well, walking in the road and some of the branches are falling that, on people's houses that won't change if you plant new trees because they'll grow and the, the roots will get bigger and they'll crack the new sidewalk but it depends that's, on the size of the tree well i thought that's why on, we were consulting the arborist it all depends uh, no we want to know if the trees are healthy uh the question of taking them down is one that the board has to wrestle with if you want right. to take them down right Planting new trees on the tree lawn is inviting problems with the road and the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Usually if you plant trees, you get the owner's permission of the abutting property and plant them on the frontage of the abutting property. Then you don't have maintenance issues with the tree lawns. The roots are still going to go into the sidewalk. You know, the sidewalk on uh, 
Academy Avenue is a mess mm -hmm. from those trees. They don't have any okay. place to go because you can't go underneath the street. <laughs> so they have to go underneath the sidewalk. Yeah. So if you plant them in somebody's yard, it'll stay, usually they'll stay within the parameters of the grassed area. Not, not on that road. Okay, I, thank you. I was just thinking about that as you're talking about. Storm drainage, I guess that's the next. It is. Uh, 30,000. Yeah. Um, again, it's just to replace the deteriorated pipe, um, little line, some CMP pipe. Uh, this is predominantly used for um, emergency, repairs. emergency repairs. In other words, spot <laughs> locations, because there again, the bigger chunk of this actually comes out of that road improvement yeah. grant, the capital reserve fund that we contribute to every year. because. Uh, if you're going to get it done efficiently, cost-wise, you ought to be doing several hundred feet, thousand feet at a time, mm. not 50 here, yeah. 20 there, and yeah. 10 here. So it's one of those lines that uh, Toby Spainauer relies on. To, uh, <laughs> Regina? I'm good with storm drainage. Mary Louise? I'm fine. Rusty? Oh, also. Uh, uh, sidewalks and curbs. Uh. Again, I've dropped that over the years from the 26,000 that it was two or three years ago down to 5,000. Um, just basically some patching. Um, we've got uh, one to do. I'm trying to think what street that was. High Street? Well, we're going to do all the sidewalk on yeah. Lafayette, both sides. There'll be sections of High Street that come in and wrap around the corner as part of the Lafayette Road project. Then we're going to extend it across the face of the uh, high street parking lot so that section will also get done um, again we're, we're looking at a, a new light a new picture that roadways are um, multi-dimensional a roadway when you're going to do it includes does it have a sidewalk if it does that's when you do the sidewalk just like that's when you do the sewer that's when you do the drainage that's when you do the paving mm -hmm. uh, so following along any of the roads that we work on uh, doing sidewalk repairs as we do them. Soup to nuts. Exactly. Right. Mary Louise. Mill Road. There's a sidewalk that goes part way up from High Street, mm -hmm. but with the traffic, because Mill Road is very heavily traveled, mm -hmm. and with all the speeding that goes on, and the neighbors complain and complain, and there's not a safe place for people to walk on the north end of Mill Road. Is Mill Road anywhere in your list? No. And partially because um, when you see Warren articles... I mean, I get calls uh, from the neighbors and you know, I Last I'd year ask. I tried a capital reserve fund for sidewalks. It was defeated. Uh, yeah. uh, there was a petition article, Mace half Road. a million Mace Road, that was defeated. Yeah. Um, there again, the voters have Kind of, they have stated that, you know, sidewalks as its own special project. No, mm -hmm. um, but that's why we, and it was just stated, take the sidewalks as part of the complete street. Right. So if they're there or if they're really warranted, right. Um, then they'll, then they'll go in. But, I think Mill Road, that upper section above north of Van's Lane. Right. Um, does not. It does not have a sidewalk either side. No. Is, is its day coming? Yes, its day is coming. Yeah. But is it here now? Yeah. No. Because I get a lot of complaints from the neighbors about the yeah. speeding mm -hmm. on that area of the road and mm -hmm. that they have no safe place to walk, which yeah. is true there because it's so narrow on that part of the, the road. That one, because the road profile uh, drops off dramatically into the lawns, mm -hmm. um, that really needs to be more engineered out because it isn't yeah. like you could just take out some lawn and. So. Put in the sidewalk. It's yes. Yeah. Thank gonna you. Be more complete. Regina. Well, also remember that that the town voted down putting the sidewalk on the upper end of Mill Road. I mean, okay. about, about eight or nine years ago. Okay. Put in where, Fred? On Mill Road. For, oh, okay. For well, it's hard once a once a road is there if it didn't have sidewalks in the specs. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. So. Get that right. So you met you mentioned Lafayette. That's going to have sidewalks. That will have the whole nine yards, and you're going to start that project up <coughs> in the spring. Yes. 
So I know Mary Louise brought up Mill Road, and again, like I understand completely what you're saying. Do everything at one time, and I wasn't suggesting earlier to just pave one Conant Road, mm -hmm. but one Conant, it's I mean, it connects schools. Oh yeah, people walk on it. Yeah. I mean, it's the library. I mean, is there anywhere in the near future? I mean, I definitely, if you, what you're saying, the state coming in and helping us is only gonna help out with certain things, and I really think that. A big Warren article is the way to go with that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The next capital improvement project or? I think you're going to find that the reason that's in the 10 year plan, so, so called, is because we requested it be put in the 10 year plan. Yep. Mm -hmm. But I think what you're going to find is when they put it in, that they're only going to pay, with the exception of the school safety issue. Mm -hmm. They're only going to pay 20% of the cost, regardless of what it is. Right. Uh, it isn't. It isn't a large cast. And yeah. even this last round, if I understood it correctly, um, the first time we went after it, the um, Safe Routes to School uh, reports and studies they did with yeah. the recommendations became a basis <clears throat> for it. This one was really, it was CMAC funding, so it was air quality mitigation. So right. the project would have been ranked against somebody who brought in public busing. Yeah. You know, okay. to determine what was the best air, you know, who was going to have a better air quality project. So um, th there's <coughs> other funding mechanisms. I think we've just got to keep working on them. One of the things you need to understand, when it kind of high, uh, Exeter, um, several other roads in town are formally state highways. Right. And the restrictions for those years ago when they were made compact roads was the state would contribute no more than 20% mm -hmm. of its maintenance and upkeep. So I think if you put this in the 10-year plan, which is there, mm -hmm. the idea was to at least get to 20%. Right. I think that's probably all we're <laughs> going to come at. Well, I would agree. And uh, a year ago, I had to sit on the, um, the judging committee. We had three communities. Oh, yeah. That was Portsmouth, Exeter, yeah. and uh, Newcastle. And um, we, went, we ended up going with Newcastle because I made the case that they had put up their funds. They had picked, okay, this is the section of road they're going to do. They had a developer with 80,000. They had a town with, let's say, 200,000. They had another department or a developer with another 20 or 30,000. Yeah. So the state's money, i.e., the CMAT funding, went much further and got more done because everybody chipped worked in. together, chipped uh -huh. in their part. Uh -huh. And uh, Exeter, while it was a valued project, it was the outer end of Exeter Road as we leave Hampton and get into um, that's, that section. Um, they didn't have any partners and they didn't have any uh, design plans yeah. they didn't really know what they were going to do they just wanted the money yeah. so <laughs> it, it was um so they got they got rated third um so that's why i say if if we had a for instance a warren article where we were doing a certain section of we would then also apply for this federal funding cmac grant yeah. and, and i think you'd see from um, a project perspective, we'd rate a lot higher because we were doing a complete street. We were yeah, doing you're shovel ready, so they know what you're going to get. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Because others were like, I won't say they were dreaming, but they were. <laughs> so. Yep. I'll see. I'll set. Uh, next section Snow is. Snow and ice. Yeah, snow and ice removal, uh, 210-306. Uh, we have bid out, um, we're only carrying 67000 for um, yep. overtime. That's a pretty much a traditional number. Uh, we've carried in the past 75000 for snow removal outside contractors. Um, I think last year we got away with a little less, but that's what we did. Uh, salt has been rebid. Um, I think the price dropped like 40 cents a ton. Yeah. Uh, a whopping, I think we saved $400 yeah. over last year's price. <laughs> but it's a savings. And um, as you can see, I put in, I put in a whopping $1 for winter sand, meaning it's did. just a placeholder because we didn't use much winter sand last year. Yeah. So we, we have some to use. But you're pairing up with the state on the winter sand? Yeah. On the salt, yes, they they put it out by region, and we we jump on their bid. I think yeah. the selectmen handled that a couple weeks ago. They did. Yeah. Rusty, you have a question? All set. Thank you. Regina. 
So hired equipment is go you have from going from thirty up to seventy five thousand. Seventy five thousand, right? Because two hundred ago we used pretty much all of that seventy five thousand. Okay. Right. Very Thank Louise. You. No, fine. Okay, next section. <laughs> all right. Administration wastewater treatment. This is one of those there again. Uh, the salaries were gone down through it. Uh, we're trying to move a number. Let me see if I can get to Yeah, it basically off. includes all our positions for yeah. uh, wastewater treatment plant, and then it includes 50% of the sewer and drain. Um, happy to report sewer and drain is no longer have any vacancies. Uh, those remain in the highway department, but this mm -hmm. encompasses all those costs. And you are seeing some reduction, I noticed, in the labor line, particularly with that because retirement of people uh, and... Uh, the older people have left, their pay grades were higher, uh, the newer people have uh, lower pay grades, uh, early starting salaries, and therefore uh, there's some savings there. Um, the overtime wages at 36,900, well, might as well say 36,000, really hasn't changed much. Um, the one line we do carry in here, and I like to point out that it is a we're, we get that money back is there's 1750 carried for overtime for dealing with rise. Uh, yeah, yeah. If if we get a call in, and we we do get calls, um, but we do bill them for that. That does come back as a form of revenue to the yeah. town. Um, career incentives again. Um, that was part of a union negotiation. We've actually looked at the number of members we have and their, their particular levels. It's a thousand that we pay out uh, to one teamster for his, um, his bachelor's <laughs> degree, and um, there are a number of people within um, this section that also are working on their road scholar. And some may question, well, why would a wastewater treatment plant person work on road scholar? They're these people are all cross-trained, and yeah. they're also, when yep. we, we uh, have a snowstorm, we go down to like two people in the wastewater treatment plant, and the other four to six actually plow snow. Yep. So I need them skilled as to what are, you know, how to yep. maintain and keep up good roads. Uh, engineering services, um, again, we've got it in here only for $8,000, which is one half the cost of the asset management program. Yep. Uh, that they're also relying on. Um, in the past, that has been higher, but when you have an $11 million bond out there, I'm anticipating any and all engineering would be covered by that particular bond. If it isn't, I've got something else to do. Um, the next line is one that's uh, severely up, and that's going to be on the lab analysis. Um, in a memo to Fred earlier this year, um, expecting that the state is going to uh, start increasing the frequency that, of us for testing for PFOAs mm -hmm. and yeah. PFS yeah. uh, within our wastewater possible discharge, our influent, and yeah. also our sludge. Yeah. Um, it's in an effort to get a handle on um, what are the real numbers, how big is the problem, yeah. where does this stuff yeah. go. Um, I can tell you that it is not, when we receive it in through the water, it is not reduced in the wastewater treatment plant process. If anything, it, it goes out, majority of it goes out with the sludge. Uh. It seems to bind up with the sludge a lot. Um, so that'll be an interesting thing to see how that uh, turns out. When it, we, my notes with that particular line, it says anticipated state mandated with two E's, yeah. a lab test. Um, there again, um, it's anticipated. They've told us this is what we're looking at. Yeah. We'll probably come out with regulations in December, could be January. Mm -hmm. I had to put it in as a, just like years ago with the stormwater, um, uh, uh, if you will, position holder. They don't come up with the frequency of tests that they do or don't. Um, at least there's numbers in the budget line to cover that particular um, need or analysis. All the other things, the $2,000 for the EPA and our normal 19300 or outside lab services that we use. Yeah. Uh, staff development here is really important because the rules are changing, literally. Um, 
by the week or the, the year. Um, and if you remember, uh, people like Mike Carl um, in the past have been, uh, he got operator of the year a couple of years ago. Yeah. We got plan operator of the year. Yeah. This money, they use it to stay on top of what is the current technology yeah. and uh, information that needs to properly run our plant. Good. Uh, electric stays up again at 215, 632. Um, and heating fuel, we requested 37,750. I think the managers, uh, he put in within his line 3162. I, I recognize that. Um, you could probably speak to that, but it's probably <coughs> more of an uh, average I over time. Is uh, that gas? Uh, <coughs> no, this would be. Uh, well, it's not gas, it's just the electric. Okay, okay. here's the tricky. Some of these pump stations have electric heat right. and electric pumps. Okay. Some of them have. So it's a potpourri, as it were. Yeah, it, thank you. That's a, that's a good word, especially when talking about wastewater. Uh, some of the other ones, when you look at heating fuel, some of it is gas because there's direct gas inside of it. Some of it is. Um, Propane, some okay. of it is, could even be, there again, electric heat. They fluctuate. The costs are all included in these. Right. Yeah, good. Again, uh, Susan's done a great job at, at running these spreadsheets left and right, and yeah. she's been able to drill these costs down so that they're yeah. accurate. And when you say heating fuel, I mean it's. Yeah, it's three different fuels, sources. Yeah. Fuel, I yeah. Can't tell you which one. That's good. Okay. For instance, there's an oil heat burner like a home heating oil burner within the wastewater treatment plant to keep the chemical room warm. So they, they use all sorts of different things. Um, hired equipment, just it's uh, miscellaneous equipment we rent or use throughout the year. For instance, uh, heavy lifts um, to change out pump motors, things of that nature. Uh, uniform rental is a contract, um, yeah. again. Sludge tipping fees. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, we did get a letter from uh, waste management. They are they did advise us that the fees were going up almost two dollars per ton. Yeah, yeah. no surprise. Right. Yeah. But we um, basically use the first six months, and then uh, with the average of any environmental surcharges and gas fees, and then in six months from there, uh, they give you the new rate. Mm. Uh, so what you're seeing here is the dollar amount based on uh, previous year's tonnage yeah. right. at that, those rates. Right, yeah. and that's the other thing is if you looked, if you saw this spreadsheet in previous years, you'd see it rounded up to let's say 1,500 or 16 or 1,700 tons. No, we drilled down and look at, because the dewatering press is working well, we were able to drill it down to, no, this is the amount of tons that we, there's no padding per, per se in this line. Um, I also noted that last year's tonnage was only one ton different from the prior year. So when, it's, when it starts to come in that consistent, we use those kind of numbers. Uh, grease disposal, uh, 20,000, that has gone up over, that's the same as last year, but gone up over prior years uh, with the new Church Street pump station and um, we're just getting a lot of grease. We wait, wait till he's finished the section. Iceberg, yeah. uh, in there. Um, Let's see if I can stay on the right page. Here I am. Uh, lab supplies, I've asked the guys to hold steady at the 88,000 that they've had in the past. Um, again, this goes up and down depending upon the operations of the, the plant. Uh, they do have their own vehicle maintenance line. Um, it stays at 32,000. Chemicals, uh, 143.060, it will be rebid in August. Um, but that is consistently the amount of chemicals that they've used. I don't, we're not hearing and we're not expecting a huge fluctuation. Uh, no new equipment, especially the $11 million bond that we have there and the sewer access assessment fee account. Um, that's in the same thing on the replacement equipment. So for a total on the wastewater treatment administration, $1,549,750. Okay, questions, Mary Louise? Yes, on page 59, mm -hmm. the grease disposal. Mm -hmm. This is one area that really gets me cross. We used to have 
uh, inspectors. We do. Especially that we still do down yeah. at the beach and check yep. the kitchens mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Yep. Because that really drives me crazy when you've got people just dumping the grease down the uh, down the sink. Yep. Have we keep? Are we finding? Are we, when we find, are we doing just say the beach, or are we doing all of the restaurant Very and uh, restaurant. all of them? I think last year Good. between them all, there's 700 inspections that he wow. conducted. Wow. When you consider well, that makes me feel better. In some restaurants, he's in three or four times in a season. Yeah. So before they open to make sure that the grease trap is easy and functioning, yeah. several times during the season to make sure it's getting emptied, maintained, yeah. cleaned. And then these post seasons, for instance, uh, the grease inspector was in my office last week, uh, said, hey, I gotta go. Um, I got appointments this afternoon for restaurants that were closing up for the season. Good. Um, that had extended a, a little bit beyond. Uh, yeah. Labor Day, and so I do know he's out there and doing okay. his job. Because um, that drives me crazy. Yeah, so, and huh? when you well, that drives me crazy that grease. And when you found that great huge chunk, right. Right. are we finding that? Uh, do you test the, that area now and again? Are we not doing that anymore? I hope. It's it's when it appears in a slug. Some of the thought is that it's uh, built up in the sewer lines. Yeah. And that when when we get, for instance. Today, the pump station, the Church Street pump station was running two out of three pumps. Both force mains were fully involved. We were pumping 27 gallons a minute when the tide was at its peak. Wow. Those types of situations flood, flush the lines. Yeah. And I bet this time next week they're going to tell me there's an iceberg size grease in there. And so it, it's, oh. uh, it's a handful of grease from... 51 different locations. Because you have no locations. control over homes, Ex private. Right. And, and or the system. The system, you know, it isn't like yeah. everything in doesn't automatically come out. So yeah. occasionally, this today being one of those days, it's going to flush itself and we're going to see the residual from that. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm glad you're still doing the inspections. I, yes. guess, I guess it helps. Probably doesn't resolve everything, but I guess it helps. It does help. Regina? Yeah. Nope, just uh, one clarification on the line item lab analysis. So mm -hmm. that line includes $26,000 added in for the P PFOA, PFAS mm -hmm. yeah. mandated testing? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Rusty's all set. I'm all set. Go on to uh, solid waste. Solid waste collection. collection. Okay. Um, not much movement within the labor section of that line. Again, uh, Susan yeah. and Christy put that together. Part-time uh, wages, we are looking to go back to the fourth. Uh, this year we operated with three seasonal rubbish collectors. Um, it really strained uh, the system and our ability to get it all collected in a timely fashion. Um, so we're, go we're going on the part-time wages back to 32 48 uh, to, to cover that. Uh, overtime wages, um, let's see if I'm reading this right, okay. Um, again, the same number of holidays, um, yeah. six, 16 Saturdays in the summer, 16 Sundays in the summer, um, total of 33869 There are career incentives in there, um, $600, was uh, that for? One person. Yeah, we're going to have to change that. I it just occurred to me that it's Rob Coates, and I did get Susan's email, but never made it back to this. Uh, his 600 is going to have to go to 1,200. Is that the career incentives? Huh? Is that the career incentive? Yes, under career incentive. Under yeah. the reports that you have, I believe yours say 600. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 It yeah. does it need to, to say 1,200. Right. Okay. Uh, the recycle hauling and the, um, and this is where I need to go back to my notes. <laughs> because, and the reason why I say that is um, we're going to have, we have, as I said earlier, Craig Musselman was used, uh, utilized by the town to rewrite um, our solid waste bids just to make sure that we had ourselves covered. Uh, he, we've come up with a bid date due November 26th for 
solid waste, recycling, construction, demolition, and the fourth one being hauling. So when I read down through you and I see uh, recycling hauling, it's based upon the current numbers that were on the current bid. In other words, I think I need to come back to you in December and say, recycle hauling, that line, this is what the new number needs to be. It could be up, it could be down, I don't know. I'm going to have to do the same thing with um, when we get into the rest of the solid waste operations and the, is all those things, the waste tipping fees, everything, it's, these are just placeholder numbers. And sadly, we're talking about close to $2 million of my $5 million budget. Right. I don't have firm numbers and I won't till probably the first week of December. So, having said. I understand, and I'll have to explain to both that there again. Um, what we're also trying to do with respect to even the recycle hauling is we were on a July 1 to June 30th cycle. These All these bids that are going out are going to rectify that. It's a three-and-a-half-year bid so that we won't run into this again That uh, in three-and-a-half years um, when I still have some hair, hopefully. Um, we will have this number when we're at this position in, in the process. Mm -hmm. We won't, uh, we're getting over this. Six yeah, we won't have the six month overlap. So, so we're cycle hauling at uh, 56,979. To be honest with you, it's within $200 of what the projection was for that particular line. So, we're doing really well there. Uh, staff development is only 500. That one we, we've got figured out. Uh, correctly. Truck lease is at 157.953. Again, that's for the two uh, solid waste trucks um, that we do own, own lease to purchase. The combined payment for those annually is 128.353. And this year, for the first time, and we'd like to do it again next year, we leased the sixth yeah. truck that we need. Good. So we didn't have to deal with the maintenance. Yep. The lease for that 13-week period is 29600 Yeah. Good. Really worked out well. Um, I think it'll work out even better next year. Yeah. It's coming in. Uh, uniform rental, we went back to the uh, 2018 level. Um, they're, again, under contract. Um, we do have in under this line, you, I you have in under memberships and dues, I believe zero, and we missed that as a, as oh, a collective okay. team. It needs to read thousand and sixty dollars. One zero six zero. Yes. That includes our um, NWRA memberships, our Public Works Association, um, any other uh, dues that we pay for the assists um, with all the materials up at the okay. facility. Um, hazardous waste collection is zero. There again, we're handling that by a warrant article. Okay. Um, vehicle maintenance, we put in for 40. The manager is suggesting 49,600. Mm -hmm. I think he's looking more at the average, which I can appreciate. <laughs> uh, collection bins I have in is zero, and we should discuss that, and replacement equipment is in at zero. Um, the reason I say we should uh, it was with the Solid Waste Committee, um, Susan and Jennifer and I um, went to that very good process. So the questions come up, and, and the Solid Waste Committee is going to, I believe, be giving you their recommendations. Uh, do we buy more carts? Don't I buy more carts? Right now we have no 96 gallon. Uh, we have some 64s. Given the number of new homes that are being built in town and the number of rebuilds that will probably um, somehow lose or destroy their carts, I'll be out of carts in a year. I do have uh, a standing purchase order that the manager has signed to use in this year's default budget, the $10,000 to buy carts. Um, if Christy tells us that the money's there in <laughs> December. If not, then that purchase order will go away. So the question begets, do I, I'm going to roll the dice, I guess. I'm trying to 
hold my dollar costs, um, do I put in 10,000 for next year or do I not? That's, that's really the question. And uh, I think, to be honest with you, given that our department is at even the target of what we should have been when she gives you the, the monthly analysis, I believe the 10,000 will be there. Fred will give me the authority to, to order them. They'll be here by the spring. We'll be fine. I'd also like to, and I believe it's one of the Warren articles that might come out of the uh, uh, Solid Waste Committee uh, for you to entertain is instead setting up a, uh, similar to the police. Uh, well, we'll fun. Thank you. <coughs> it's a special fund. I knew that was the wrong word. Uh, where we get out of the buying the carts and putting in the, that we charge a sufficient dollar amount for the new carts that it goes into this line and when the line builds up we just order the replacement carts and continue doing it that way and, but that has yet to be decided with that i that's all i had to say about the total the solid waste collection line it as I said, I added is 569, but we just added in another thousand, so it's 570, 600 and some change. Questions, Rusty? Mm -hmm. No. So, Regina. So, this budget is assuming that we're not going to do any changes for the public works trash operations. Correct. Yeah, this does not include any recommendations that the board has yet to see from the Solid Waste Committee. We have kept it as if it were continuous operations uh, from previous expenditures, uh, waiting for the board to have um, discussion on the recommendations. Okay. And um, I don't have any questions, but I was uh, do it. I know that we're going to be getting get to get the recommendations from the solid waste committee mm -hmm. and I might wait for at that till that time until go over this whole thing but I do want to point out I've looked back again at the past uh, four years five years and I wanted to say what I noticed which I was quite shocked I looked at the total tons of trash that public works is responsible for mm -hmm. and then I also looked at what gets billed from the state of New Hampshire and surprisingly, in 2019, the state trash that gets billed is only about 4% of the total of what you guys take in. And that's because this year, in 19, we were taking it all as trash. There was no recycling from them, correct? Give or take, yes. Yeah. And then prior to those years, all the way back to 15, its average is about 2%. But I did realize for all 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19, over 90% of the trash collected comes in during the April and September months. Well, yeah. Now that is the influx of mm -hmm. the whole town. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to, uh, and I, I made some more notes on this and I actually just did July and September today. So, and that is a substantial amount of the total amount as well. So I am going to forward this to you guys again and I don't know if it's maybe a useful tool for the trash committee. I know we haven't seen any of their suggestions. I like the revolving fund, and it, would it be possible to do something like that for more than just recycling, more than just the bins, but maybe like if we in the future might start ch charging more for trash pickup? Well, the, one like of having the suggestions that, money? that came out of the committee was, for instance, the fees that we collect at the transfer station. Right. To put all those in a revolving fund, rather than going to the general, right? Rather than going to general, and that's uh, again uh, for others to decide. Um, right. What that would do is, over time, drive down the operating portion of this budget because I would propose that that would then be used to pay for the C and D bills, the you know recycling disposal, even the transportation. So. Um, Initially, uh, without knowing how much, it's around 150,000 a year, but not seeing the bill yet, it would, it would take a year of seeding for that to occur. So yeah, the committee came out with a couple of recommendations and it would change in the future how we operate it and fund it. All right. 
Thank you. Yep. Really? Yes, I do. I have several. Um, is there a way to segregate glass so that we can just, I, I understand that it is a reasonably valuable, they use it on roads and stuff, and uh, is there a way that we can pick the glass, glass bottles, glass jars, glass spaghetti sauce, and anyway, because it looks to me like that will certainly reduce the weight, because your, your trash goes by weight. Right. And if we could get some organized way of getting the public to segregate their glass um, I, I think that would be a big help. And you might get some money for it. I'll give you the um, standard Mark Gerald answer. It depends. Um, so, <laughs> and let me just try and quickly elaborate on that. Yes, uh, we're planning on <coughs> leasing, renting, purchasing a, an open top container where bulk quantities of glass could be deposited into that container. Um, waste management will take that glass and re-grind it back into beach sand and use it in their daily operation. Yeah. Their cost for that is $35 a ton just to, to accept it. Part of the expansion of the transfer station that will occur over the fall and into the winter is going to be, again, residents who, want, who are bringing in their recycling can segregate that glass and would, we would cut that off from the, or divert it from the stream. Uh, Craig and I did talk to all the other uh, the peop potential people who were going to bid on it this year and that was uh, acceptable to them. Uh, they like the fact that it's not, not just a once and you thrown away, buried forever, but it's being reused. Craig was clear to point out to me though that even with the penalty if you take the, all the tonnage that we've thrown away for recycling and you look at the, the $100,000 in penalty that we're going to pay, $37 a ton is what it works out to. So there isn't, in other words, it, there isn't a whole lot of to be gained. Um, but I still think we need to be open to it and I still think we need to try. The other thing that and when I said it depends, it really depends on what the four bids are that are coming in. Been warned that Boston just paid, is now paying $91 a ton to get rid of recycling across the board. Hmm. So I've been warned that I'm probably, we're never going to see the zero that we had a couple of years ago. Hmm. 37 might be the low number. Let's say the num new number is 75 who would change the discussion about glass instantaneously because the 35 would look like a great number then. So right. the market will dictate, the bids will dictate, well, that's true, yeah. there's more to be. But we are living in a community that has restaurants, etc. Summer traffic, huge summer traffic, beer bottles, beer bottles, beer bottles. Uh, I discarded a pickle jar, or <laughs> mm -hmm. but the quantities and you have in these restaurants and so forth, wouldn't it be, or, or tell those businesses that they would have to pay to get rid of their own glass waste if they create, a, I don't know what the weight would be, but if they create weight from their bottle beer bottles all summer, uh, couldn't it be their responsibility? I mean, my pickle jar isn't going to shake the earth, but especially the beer bottles, the liquor bottles. Isn't this all part of what the... Yeah, it is, the, and that's the, what Jen yeah, was the just... Yeah, the is going to bring us a report on this. <laughs> you must have seen it. It's and we're going to discuss... Yeah, exactly. Dude, because I, can read I want Jen's you to mind. have the benefit. Right. of all the work that the committee did okay. before yeah. us giving you yeah. that yeah. Um, yeah. dissertation because right. we'll be before you to talk about it once you guys have had a chance to read it um, so that we can come and explain it. So I don't want to take away from that because it was the work that they did. You don't want to at, at the, tip the... <laughs> yes. But, but it does. It really depends on what the next month. Now, number two, mm -hmm. carts. 
They are not barrels, I will remind everyone. <clears throat> they are carts. There were a couple of really big uh, orders for the carts, oh, 2010-ish. Yep. Uh, and we had a couple of really big, and then we gave them out all over the place. Um, we should, we sh certainly should charge. The carts are supposed to stay with the uh, location. Yep. Like 148 Little River Road, I've got two carts. And you know them and you've got their ID numbers and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. um, have we managed to scoop up the carts from all of these multi-unit dwellings and so forth that people... I know there was a discussion. Again, the answer is tied to the Solid Waste Committee presentation. It's all going to come out. Okay. In every well, Two I weeks. don't know what's Two going weeks. to come out. Well, why don't we wait? One well, week I, but I, I have out. questions now that they might not have tackled. I haven't followed everything they've done. The next thing is, you have you're going to have a proposed article in here to conduct the transfer station improvements study. My board in 1995, saw to the closing of the dump and uh, building the transfer station. Uh, the uh, town manager at the time, whom I shall not name, but Fred knows, <clears throat> uh, didn't uh, perhaps do the job that should have been done. I'm concerned about the volume of waste that you are having to handle. I think we should stop collecting the state park waste. Again, that's going to totally. come in the report, isn't it? Did they that deal is, with that? That is a little bit different. This goes to what Virginia was just saying um, when you look at all in the analyzation of the numbers. 2% of our entire waste up until this year is state trash. 2%. But the, and the state trash is and that they pay for, and the state trash the is now. waste. But it, it, and it's commingled, so it, it, there is no such thing as up to two years. Uh, up until this year, there was recycling yeah, and there was that. trash. But they don't really recycle down there. They throw everything in the yeah. Okay, because I'm concerned about that with the volume where you have to use your trailers and then you're using the time of your drivers to drive down into Massachusetts, wherever they dump the stuff, and that is an extra burden on you as well. And what about the, what, what about private uh, businesses? The Galley Hatch, uh, Hannaford, LeMay's, there are a number of businesses in this town that have always paid to get rid of their own waste. Again, that's coming out in the report. So why don't we wait for the report? Well, we're going, going through get... this budget tonight. Right, and but... I'll be happy to see what they're doing in the report. But it's, it's a thought that I have. That well, why don't I would you like go to the share. committee and talk about it then? You could well, have gone. I, I haven't gone in. But OK, the, so the, as long as you're comfortable, that's yeah. being addressed. Yep. OK. Regina? I just, do you know when we're going to get Fred, the report? do you know when we get the report? November 1, it said. Wait, when we asked Fred. I do not know. It's projected for November 1st. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> recycling? Uh, or the report. Where are we at now? Solid waste. Solid waste. Landfill operation? Yep. Um, total of 31,831. Um, covers three areas, the monitoring and inspections. Um, we just got a new, um, and also groundwater monitoring. We just got a new vendor. Um, it was bid out and uh, I believe the board voted and supported the contract. The big uh, unknown in this whole, this section of the budget is um, we're probably going to have to do, um, we know we're going to have to do is uh, groundwater testing with respect to PFOA mm -hmm. and PFS. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're carrying 14,551 in there uh, for, uh, so additional. You're, we already got this bid. 
So this is actually has real numbers. Oh, gosh. Sorry. That's okay. Who's on first? These, the, these are the changes that happen as projects are out to bid during budget season. So uh, landfill monitoring services, oh. which includes groundwater monitoring, landfill maintenance, and monitoring inspections, yeah. was all right. just recently bid, and this was the one we were here. It went down. It went down. Good. I mean, so this is good news. Um, oh, good news. Even including the additional testing that is beyond our permit requirements. Right. And what we've asked for in the bid for PFOS, PFAS, um, doing the total for those three lines is 14750 hmm. per the contract. Right. So that's so the subtotal for landfill operations? 17750 Yes, sorry, because you have to add in that 3000 from that uh, landfill maintenance part. Yeah. All right. So that, right, that's correct, that one item did go down. That's for monitoring. Yeah. It's for monitoring inspections and groundwater monitoring, the yeah. both lines that have the word monitoring them. Right. Right. And you saw that on uh, October 21st. Hmm. Nice. Any questions? Go on to presentation. Everything you just said. Everything I just said. <laughs> Uh, okay. ha yeah, half of what uh, appears in this line is uh, literally placeholders for bids due November 26 uh, of 19. These are essentially last year's numbers with last year's rates. And so you can see that the total transportation in, is 747,393. Um, again, this just doesn't cover labor, it just covers the cost of haul, collect and haul, and disposal. Um, but literally, this whole line will change back to, yeah. Okay. Whether it's going to go up or down or stay the same, I don't really know. Transfer station? Transfer station. The regular wages stay at uh, 197652 Let me see. I'm reading the right line. Yep. Part-time wages, again, we're just using one seasonal labor for, for 28 hours for 22 weeks. That's a big help because during the summer, um, there's a lot more people there, and it just takes uh, more staff to make sure that people don't either injure themselves or throw something. You know, we don't end up with another TV in the compost or uh, a microwave in the recycling, things of that nature. You signaling me again? No. Oh, move along, Sorry. right? Yeah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> there Over was a little bit of that. <laughs> Overtime wages. Um, I am carrying, I have to point out that it, I, I notice here in the, in the lines, I, for the 13 Sundays, I'm only covering those five hours. And I know uh, part of what the board wanted to discuss and possibly tonight is mm -hmm. whether or not to go back to so uh, a full time uh, year round, uh, full Sunday. So um, again, the 38 Sundays that are not summer, we're showing just five hours. Uh, for the times the four employees and then uh, 13 weeks during the summer again five hours only and, and but five employees on the on the floor so um, I have a quick quick I, wait, are you wait. operating well are you Let, going under finish. a point let's I finish. want to know where he is he is are you doing this now I'm in the budget still well we have the um, I was only pointing out merely because yeah. that's if if you decide to if we revisit this issue after the budget or in the next five minutes that's where those particular lines are so yes. that's um, yes. you know where they are and I just wanted to be straight for what I was for carrying or wasn't discussion. wasn't carrying yeah uh, electric doesn't change much at 8910 heating fuel again we use uh, it's, uh, we skipped career incentives I'm sorry. That's okay. No. The, okay. And that one. Oh, okay. It just it had a correction because these are the ones that uh, the people had advanced since we've done this. So that line item has to go to 600 per okay. his level that he's at currently. Yeah. And literally, some of these changed in the last month. That's why it isn't that we're we, hearing about them now. It's when we put this together in July, they were at one level, and now they're at another. Right. Staff development, uh, 2,800. I think last year all the solid waste certifications did not have to be renewed. Uh, there's 28 employees. They all need to be certified to work 
at the transportation to be eligible for the overtime. Uh, and then um, 10, we have 10 Waymaster certifications, $90 each. So the total under staff development um, would be 2,800. Again, I'll go back to electric stays at 8910. Heating fuel, 1,140. It's, it's uh, hard piped gas. Uh, it predominantly just heats the office area. Yeah. Bathroom downstairs. Water, 756. Um, my budget shows repairs and maintenance at 20, but the manager has suggested or recommended 40. Um, I think he's, he's addressing what the situation is, and that is um, the station does not get uh, younger each year. It was built in 94. <laughs> uh, it was up there last week and talking to the staff, and I commented to them that I think we need to have somebody come in, sandblast the structural steel on the inside, and paint it because it's rusting away. Uh, the whole building, you know, it needs to have a power wash inside. Uh, otherwise, that structure won't continue to last. It's a very caustic environment. Um, so the manager is reading my mind, and I would have to say in this particular instance, I would agree. Uh, hired equipment, 500. I always say I agree with the manager. It goes with my job. Uh, uniform <laughs> rental, 2,400. Uh, supplies oh, is expensive, 3500 and uh, vehicle maintenance, 17 That That has... Yep, you just skipped over one that has to be changed. What's this? Oh, the screening and grinding? Yes. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So yeah, screening and grinding, and um, Fred had put that in as 10000 but it's now... Yeah, so these bids came in as well. These ones were approved uh, last week or the week before. Yeah. Uh, the brush clipping and removal for the 2019... Um, Bid is eighteen five. And the compost is gonna be zero. handled for zero. No expense, no no refund. But that's good. Okay, yeah, questions, Rusty. No, we'll set for now. Thanks. Very Louise. No. no. Oh, are we gonna, can we talk about the transfer station now since we're on this budget mm -hmm. or why don't we? Yeah. Well it's on the articles. Let's kill this off first. Well, I don't have any questions on this on these budget lines. I don't either. I just have. Oh, one. you mean about the operation hours? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would like to adjust the budget so that it has it so that we're open again on a full day on Sunday. Yeah. Whatever ahead. that is. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, you want to? I'd make, make that motion. motion. I don't oh. know what the amount would be, but I would make the motion. We can to that. correct that amount. Yeah. Okay, wait, we got a motion. Do we have a second? I, I will second, but I have a question. Okay, go ahead now. Okay. I think the, the hours, you're talking Sunday hours, you're talking about people who've worked all week, and they can't necessarily scratch things together by 9 a.m. I'd like us to see it closer to something like 11 to 2, because I, I think you need a little leeway in that Sunday morning stuff. Well, I think there's still people. What's the what were the normal hours before? So it's eight, Nine, to, eight to three eight is to, Sunday. Yes. I think the reason we went eight to eleven is because having staff come in in the middle of the day. Right. Um, we already in the summer are out co collecting the trash, so they need to be in earlier anyway. Right. So that's where the half hours came from, but not a middle of the day type of thing. But it's hard for the people at home who are the guys who are going to be bringing this stuff if they've been working in their yards or whatever they're not ready to come over at, at eight o'clock or nine o'clock in the morning but if you, if you don't have it Some at that point in time there. you're not going to be able you'll have staff that won't want to man those hours and then you won't be able to be open anyways well are we doing this for the for the public or are we doing this for i'm not saying you're not doing it for the public but if you can't get help to come in I think we should just go back to the way it used to be. I, to I don't disagree with you. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I don't think, okay, I think so that some people that still like to go there at 8 o'clock in the morning and then the ones that can't get there till 1130, it won't be a big deal. So, no. so that's your motion, 8 to 3? 8 to 3. Oh, all right, then I'll second it. Okay. Any other, just, Mr. Uh, Fred? Yeah. We can do whatever the board orders us. Okay. <laughs> well, Rusty. This, this motion is to find out what the cost is going to be for the budget for next year. I understand. Right? Right. We, we need the right parameters now. of what you want, and that's what you're voting on. Right. Right. Okay. All in favor? Unanimous. Unanimous. Okay. 
Okay, right, thank move you. on to the uh, up to sewer sewage line, collection sewer and disposal. Collection. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Again, uh, we t hit on this before back when we were talking about roads and the complete streets. And this sewer line maintenance, for instance, 100000 if we had to literally step in and let's say do Manchester Street and line it, this is where there's sufficient money in here to do that whole project. This is this is whole project money. <coughs> Sadly, this is one of the first places I look for if I'm given a default budget where I go to strip money, because <coughs> adding up fives and tens doesn't cut two hundred thousand out of my budget mm -hmm. like I had to do last year, or this current fiscal year. So this is where I would go, and because it's a big ticket item. Um, mm -hmm. So if and when we do that, or if that occurs. This is the one of the lines that takes a big hit. I have a question. Are we finished with this? Yeah. I'm okay, done. go on. I, I have a question. Go, yes. Relining. Now, does that mean you take or these plastic pipes or something and slide it into the existing pipe? No. In fact, well, that's why I wanted to. Toby's working on a whole uh, collection for us right now. Of, uh, there's different vendors out there. Some of these are uh, automated sprays. Um, they create a uh, lining inside mm -hmm. the existing pipe. Yeah. Um, it's not a pipe in a pipe. Oh. So it is right. providing structural stability as okay. well as repair okay. through the what they call a lining process. I was wondering if that might be an option instead of having to dig up the whole thing. And it is. This is an option for that, but okay. it isn't um, the equivalent of what I think you're saying is like sleeving, yeah. you know, a pipe inside it's of a pipe. It's not slip lining. It's, it's not slip lining. Okay. It is. If, so if the pipe hasn't deteriorated, I mean, it's not all crumbling apart. You have a way to exactly slide in. Oh, that's good. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah. Anybody other questions? Okay. Uh, Two last items, Exeter Sewer Agreement, 59,091. Uh, Fred uh, has been in more communication with Exeter regards to that. I know it's up for changes uh, or adjustments. And wastewater treatment plant maintenance, we leave at 55,000 uh, because it's there's 675 pieces of equipment in the plant. And um, I think you figured out one time if you went backwards, it was like $80 per piece of equipment, which is <laughs> the bargain. chump change. So um, that's why it stays the same. And that's all we have to say about that. Questions? Are we going to go on to the list under appointments? Yes, we are. We're just going to finish the budget. Oh, okay. Do you have anything? Nothing, sir. Okay, let's go to uh, agreement of Town of East Kingston access to WWTP. And I have a question on that one. Let's hear from whomever is going to discuss it first. It, uh, go for it. It's a. Uh, this is a. It's a housekeeping item. Oh, um, yes. Well, it was a special request. Well. Yeah, that too. But uh, it's like rye. We. It was pointed out to us earlier this year. Um, if someone really drilled down through the state's regulations, they can't. And, and Fred concurs. Um, we're supposed to have with everybody that we let into the wastewater treatment plant, we'll, and and allow them to dispose of sludge. These what we call the member towns in our mm -hmm. area. And you have it within the ordinance. Right. Uh, we're supposed to have a s separate standing agreement on top of the fact that they're in the ordinance. Mm -hmm. Is there more so, to it than that? Right. So uh, the town of East Kingston is in need of a place for their haulers. So again, it's not the town of East Kingston hauling. It's people who are going to collect subtage from the town of East Kingston. Uh, they have requested of this board um, approval to allow them to come in. I think in my recommendation memo that should be in your packets, you'll see that sludge or septage, let's use the word septage, that gets brought into our plant is one 365th of what our plant treats. Mm -hmm. it, it is a minuscule amount. This is nothing to do with capacity. Um, our current agreements with all the other member towns that once we bring in 20,000 gallons per day, we only take from town of Hampton Hollers. Mm -hmm. uh, so we keep that limit very low to begin with. Yeah. Uh, we got a sample agreement from DES and some other towns that have them. Um, we reviewed it, we went through, made sure that we had outs in case something was wrong, and we wanted to be able to say no, and that's mm -hmm. what's in front of you for agreement. 
Okay. Fred, did you want to say anything on this? Just, this is not an intergovernmental agreement. It's just simply agreement between the two boards of selectmen, basically. Okay. Mary Louise? Yes. Um, unlike Rye, oh, thank you. where there's a pipe piping the waste down mm -hmm. into the treatment plant, mm -hmm. you're talking about individuals having their septic tanks pumped That's and right. the exactly trucks are coming what in? We're talking about. Right. Yes. Okay. And is there any way to check? I know Fred has put a little notice out here a few weeks ago about people putting all kinds of diapers and stuff and whatever uh, down the, uh, the sewer or the, the toilets. Can, is there any way to tell? If that if gets delivered to the plant in this lo particular location, there's a mechanical screen and a rake. Right. And it gets caught up in that. Right. Before it can even so get we're just into be our literally system. taking wet waste, correct? Not any stuff with well, it. Correct. And they still have rules. So all the haulers have to prove our license under our ordinance. They, the rules are all yeah. put out. They have to test for pH. They have to provide a sample. We have to have their license. Because I'm this is uh, this is no different than any of the other haulers that come in. Yeah. Because I'm assuming that East Kingston only has um, septic tanks. There's about a thousand properties in total in the town, thousand thirty seven according to their town administrator. Yeah. And not all of them even They're on septic service. tanks mostly, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that's what you'd be doing. Yeah. yeah. That's what we used yeah. to do mm -hmm. before we before the, the sewer systems. Yeah. Yep. Okay, good. I just want to make sure Any we're other not questions? Messes. That's what some of us still do. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't oh I'll make a motion that we agree. Okay. I'll, I'll second. Se all, right. all in favor? Unanimous. So Thank you. Uh, request for expenditure of the wastewater development charge account for the purchase of two pumps for the high street pump station. I will so move. Second. All of, uh, in discussion? Yeah, can we just know what it's about? <laughs> yeah. I was going to be like, sure. <laughs> no. Now, we recently had one of the high street East pumps uh, yeah. go down. Yeah. And in doing that, we were down to one pump. These pumps are, you know, 32 plus years old each. The second pump, there's one of the keys. It's not working on it. Um, this is what this fund was set up for. This is, uh, it's time to replace yeah. this old infrastructure so we don't get in a situation where we have zero pump. Okay. Thank you. Questions? All in favor? Unanimous? Uh, oh. 47 Ocean Drive, removal of basketball post yeah. and backboard. Earlier this summer, we were down looking at uh, the Woodstock and the Woodstock Street that beach yeah. access ramp. And at the time, we noticed there were two basketball hoops permanently installed within the right of way. These are not your uh, ones that are on a plastic base that you can tip and move away. Uh, they literally hired contractors who had not gotten a dig safe or permission from the town put in their own concrete pedestal uh, with four bolts sticking up through and um, that way the kids could play basketball in Ocean Drive. Yummy. Uh, I sent letters to both occupants. Yep. Uh, one of them uh, was kind of, yep, we're going to remove it. He said it's going to take me a couple weeks for his contractor. And this is the one not 47. Uh, one of the issues was it leans out could lean out so far in the uh, uh, travel lane that I'd hit it with a piece of either highway equipment, snow plowing, or something else. Yeah. Uh, lo and behold, the day before he was going to get it taken out, uh, the little bus that we have for our beach crew ran into it. Mm. The kids were out playing with it. He, the homeowner, did instruct them to put it back up to the 10-foot height. They left it down to the low dunking height of 8, and we sheared into it. Uh, he had it removed the next day. So this is the... Is it doing uh, damage to the bus? It did, which I believe is like $1,000, and I believe Christy, Christina working Oseman the insurance companies. was working to get him to pay for it. Um, this particular resident feels that it's justified to keep it there. Um, for the, and as I say, I, I sent them both the same letter. The both uh, Fred and I went... He spoke with Fred after I sent him a letter said that, if, if I can paraphrase for Fred, that he'd send more information proving 
that he a had a permit to keep it there or b that it was really on his property mm -hmm. uh, within your package you can actually see there was an as-built survey done fred and i went out with a cloth tape and it's all of about three and, three and a half feet three and a half yeah. feet out into the town's right away not including the part that hangs out even further probably closer to five i'll make a motion we have it removed i'll second that motion okay. actually i'd like to see that maybe uh, adjusted just a little bit saying that any time a situation like this occurs on anybody's property for the whole town the public works director would have the authority to order it removed i don't think you want that well I, gotta, well i appreciate that, that is and, and good think, to have yeah. right you know if you, if you truly read the ordinances i still like working within uh with the manager uh with the police chief and or the fire chief for these uh, road hazards issues. Yeah. And uh, I think we would specifically with this one, we one sent a letter, had a follow up conversation, right. a follow up discussion, another conversation, right. and that we, I think we started this years ago. I remember we had trees at the corner of Exeter Road and Toll <laughs> Farm that were in the right of way. And yeah. it was to ask either move them or we're cutting them down. Mm. And so. Okay, all in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Okay. Thank you. All right. Now, we approved next year's budget for the transfer hours, right? Yes. Now we have to approve doing it now out of the out of this year's. What we approved is that the, the money the money is in the budget supposedly for this year already. You okay. just cut the hours to save dollars, to use it for other purposes. Yeah. We're just putting them back. You're putting them back now. Yeah. yeah. So they're doing it. So right. beginning when will we be opening eight? Yeah. To three? That's what I want to make yeah. sure that I make a motion tonight that we reopen sure. from eight to three, starting whenever is comfortable for public works. I guess I really don't care, but whether it's next mm -hmm. year or right now. I gotta look at a calendar. Yeah, we gotta look at the calendar. Reason being is we have to post it. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you guys think. Um, yeah. You're not having as much stuff with the lawns and whatever. Well, can we just say as, as soon as possible? Yes. With notice, which we yeah. will put back on the website That's as the yeah. way we yeah. did yeah. it. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Jim, yeah, may I? Oops, sorry, we forgot to do something on the East Kingston uh, um, agreement. <laughs> Our ordinance specifically names everybody by town that we allow um, okay. towns to come from. So there would need to be a vote by the board to, to revise the ordinance to include, include these kings. kings. I'll make yeah. the motion. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Thank yeah, you. Let's... Sorry about that. that. Sorry. That time <laughs> Authorized expenditure of 14500 for brush grinding. That's not right. I'll so move. I'll second. Questions? All, All in favor? Okay, let's start at seven to do the whole thing. All right. You got something else? I have one more question for them. Sure. Yeah. Sorry, committing months ourselves. <laughs> we just did the brush grinder. Yes. So we are approved. Yes. Thank Go you. Go ahead, Mary Louise. Just a real. Wait. How far have we gone in our what thirty million dollar rehab of the treatment plant? It was the first chunk is what eight plus eight something million. Yeah. Have we? Closer to 11, but yes, the plans are at 90%. Okay. Um, at least they were two weeks ago. And where we go from here is um, they have to be approved by the state for okay. release. For oh, okay. Because um, so, where we've got the money, I'd like right. to. Yeah. The so guys the, have been looking at different components and good. going to different towns, and yeah. the engineers are designing them specific to our site. Good. Those plans are getting ready to go to the state and then from there it's good so once the state has the plans any comments they have are incorporated into the yeah. either bid documents or the plans themselves the plan is to have it out for bid and and it, we don't based upon the state's vacation schedule i'm not really sure if, you know yeah. I mean, how long it'll take to get through there it's typically three two three four weeks yeah um, we could be the third week of January bidding her out or okay. for Valentine's Day. Either way, it'll be bid out in the start of 2020 yeah. for start in, let's say, May. Because it's critical to get that done, yes. and I've been hoping that we right. can turn Part on the, the gas. We didn't bid it out during the summer one. The plans wouldn't have been ready. They would right. have been right. half done. 
and secondly, you would have been competing with all the other summer work. Right. In this case, this project being bid during the winter will take, you know, this is a year-long project. It will take somebody. So we can call this phase one Correct. of the right. rehab. Okay. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Good. Nice Bless seeing your you. hearts. Okay. Yay. What a job. Town manager's report. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very yep. much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, just so people are knowledgeable of what's going on here, uh, the first day to submit petition warrant articles to amend the zoning ordinance is November 11th, 2019. Proposed amendments must be submitted to the Selectman's Office. That's a statutory requirement. Uh, and incidentally, that remains open until December 11th by statute. The Army Corps of Engineers is actively engaged in dredging Hampton and Seabrook Harbors. Work is ongoing in Seabrook Harbor with materials from that area being used to stabilize the Southwest Harbor Bridge abutment and the area uh, of washout on a state fish and game property just to the north, uh, to the west of that. Work has also begun in removing sand from Seabrook Harbor to okay. Seabrook Beach by the Army Corps. Work continues on Park Avenue to complete the replacement of the new culverts and culvert systems. They're actually doing now cleanup work because the street is open. Uh, the water company has had a number of water line breaks in the area which they have repaired. Work on the replacing Kids Kingdom is about to start, actually it's underway under the leadership of the Park and Recreation Department and Mill Road water main replacement is in fact engaged at this point. We have a request, Mr. Chairman, <coughs> from, <coughs> excuse me, from um, Team Says Local 633 in cooperation with the United States Marine Corps Toys for Tots Drive uh, to use the town hall in conjunction uh, with their two programs. Uh, we have the public works vehicle that's upstairs that was built by the public works department for the parade. Uh, they want to use that for uh, holding toys donated for kids, uh, toys for, for tots. I think it's a good idea. We need board permission to do that. You need a vote? Yes, sir. I make that motion. We Second. Allow My only question is: Does that affect the the firefighters toy bank program, which no. they've they've usually had a box here also? Yeah, they'll still have a box here. It okay. Doesn't affect it at all. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, we've received notice from the municipal association. Uh, we need to designate a member of the board of selectmen who will go to the annual meeting and vote on the items dealing with the. Uh, the Municipal Association. Uh, I've given all of you copies of the notices and other information that's required along with the nomination uh, schedule of candidates to uh, be nominated for the respective offices in the Municipal Association. And I need to report that to the, the association before their annual meeting, which is in two weeks. So in the next week, perhaps by next Monday, you, you folks can all decide who wants okay. to go. So why don't we, everybody's got the information from you, right? Yes, sir. So next Monday we'll, we'll vote on, right. or we'll nominate Good. somebody, or whomever is interested can tell us and we'll yep. go from there. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm interested. If no one else is, I can let you know now and we can yeah. decide next Monday. I'm, I'm not, so that would be good. I support Regina. Here you go. No, I'd be fine with that, but I'd rather have Rick here too. Yeah, just in yeah case that's good. Interested. Yep. So yes, we'll sure. It's always possible that we have more than one. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So. Um, that's a different issue. Park Avenue. That's it. I did re issue the board a set of very, very, very early draft uh, drafts of warrant articles that we have to date. Yes. Uh, there Thank will you. be, I can guarantee you, there will be a substantial number of changes in the way they're written. Yeah. This is just a, a very rough draft of what's been thought of. Um, and it has a lot of detail in it that won't appear in the regular warrant article simply because you want to, you want to be held to one figure for the entire project, not yeah. multiple figures. Multiple figures are there to give you an idea of magnitude of what we're yeah. talking about. Um, the preliminaries are helpful. I appreciate it. Well, what, what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to get the articles in, in form and approved by town council, approved by departments, uh, and have them available for your meeting on November 25th to start considering 
uh, whether or not you wish to place the articles. That's why I want to give you an advanced look at what's going Good. on. Yep. Some of those articles you may not wish to place. Mm. And I, I can understand that given the fact that some of them are, um, shall I say, a, a little costly. Um, <laughs> and, and they may have to be driven back for another purpose. But uh, we, we hope that, uh, that this will speed the process up and your, your consideration time down so that you have more information available to you as you go along. Yeah, it helps. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Any questions, Rusty? Nope. Mary Louise. Nope. Virginia. I have one question about the Warren articles. Fred, on the one for um, Lock Road, is that, uh, on September 3rd, we got a memo from Public Works, and it was talking about future challenges for the Public Works Department. Mm -hmm. Now, does that Warren article, that looks like it's addressing most of the things sore? It addresses all the items that need to take place in Lock Road yeah. in, order, in order for it to be repaved and not dug up in the next 20 years. So means this has been dangling for a while. Yeah, it's, it's more than dangling. We need to get yeah. it done. Yeah. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, old business. Rusty? Uh, nope. Mary Louise? Yes, I would like to see on our next agenda, please, a discussion on the rail trail and uh, also uh, a discussion on this good energy presentation that was given to us. I want to, see, I want to know what the... Uh, Benefits might be uh, uh, New Hampshire adopts electricity aggregation for residents and businesses. I never knew that we might have a choice. But if we do have a choice, I'd like to take a, a look at that. Okay. Um, now, I'm assuming our next agenda is going to be Monday night. That's next correct. Next Monday. That's correct. Excellent. I just have one thing. Go ahead. I just want to let the board know that I had a couple of uh, concerns going through the current finest kind uh, agreement, uh, and I know that's in process of getting worked on by the Public Works Department, but I did forward all my concerns to the Public Works Director, okay. and I know he's going to do his best to answer my questions so that when it is time for us to renew the agreement, we know that we're, uh, that I feel comfortable signing it. Good. That's all I have to say. Okay. Uh, new business, bond acceptance for 9 and 11 I Street and 101 Ocean Boulevard for $29,582. That has been signed off on, Mr. Chairman, by the, by the Department of Public Works. That's correct. Okay. Good. So do we need to vote on that or anything? Yes, sir, you do. Got uh, a motion? I'll so move. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Closing comments? Uh, just one thing. Uh, we received a memo late this afternoon from the police chief in regards to the meeting he held, I think, last Tuesday for the residents down at North Beach that were upset about oh, the car yes. shows and everything going on there late at night. Yep. So I just wanted to let everyone know it looks like they're going to work out some type of curfew on the parking down there with the state and the uh, yep. state troopers. Good. So just to let residents know that you know, if you're used to having your car there late at night, you might not want to do that anymore. I have a motion to adjourn. Uh -huh. So moved. 2137. I'll second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Channel 22. <laughs>